Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about that time. All we right. on the pop we rolling? We rolling, we rolling, we rolling, we rolling. We up. Yeah, we up, we up, we uh, up. Uh-oh. We up. Hold on, oh, I got stepped up here too quick. Okay. Oh. Barbershop Stories, the podcast. Let me Episode sit up. 29. Wow. We got a special guest Almost on here. Almost 30. But uh, honestly, every week is a special guest. You know? What are you talking about? Yeah, every week is a special guest, but this nigga him, this week, he's special. <laughs> so all the other special guests, y'all special too, but now it's his time to enlighten you on what's happening with him. We got Homie J, Jerome David Crumpton Jr. the <laughs> third. <laughs> Goddamn dog Dumb homie. Midnight. Little homie. Little homie and the Regal. All that stuff right there. And I'm sure he's gonna fill you in on all this stuff right there in a I'm comedic narrator, how cut slang of Benny Mac, and that is Sammy No Nose. Sammy no, we no got nose. that info, baby. That's right. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna bag on it, man. Mm. We're gonna have a great time right here, man. What up, my man? We appreciate you taking the time to come on out here and mess with us at the Bob Shop Story Podcast. So hey, we're gonna get started. I'm gonna let Sam start with. I got a little something in the car. Uh-huh. You know it's all good. That's how you do in the Bob Shop. This shit ain't script. But I'll be right back. Well, right. you know, hey, we rolling smooth, man. Hey, ain't no problem. Go on to the car and get whatever you need, man. <laughs> man, go to the car for real, though. <laughs> he go to the car for real. But, hey, we in here with homie. real homie, homie J. Okay, okay. Uh, 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 we know him by that. Just, you know, I had to call the, the, the name out for the old school, okay, man. Okay, the old, okay. The old Birmingham. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. That's you know, fine. They, 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 they know you back from... We know you V949 all day now. Right, right. But, you know, we, we also know you, you know, if you got a little age on you in this city, we also know you from 95, 7 Jam. Back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the if, day. If they don't, re- you know, they don't realize with the beard and yeah. the hat on with yeah. no braids. You know what I'm saying? The braids say, say, gone, Say it again. Man. Say that part. The braids gone, man. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they not. <laughs> but, but, you know, a little gray worker, so, you yeah, know, yeah. we got to let them know. That's homie J, man. Farming the little homie. Yeah, yeah. You know? um, all of that, um, actually, in between... Uh, jams and V949. I actually consulted back in Jackson, Mississippi, where, where I um, did radio okay. at uh, radio station WJMI 99 Jam. Okay. So that was what you were doing in the gap between, yeah. Between, yeah, between yeah. Jams? No, no, no. Well, actually, I was a consultant another station. At okay, Jams, okay, okay. A former intern of mine, uh, my man Gerald Jabot, owns a radio station. So at the uh, 95 7 Jam stint faded away. Did that consulting thing, um, then came back to Montgomery. Okay. Did Hot 105 down that way, and then uh, Hot 105. Came back to the ham, man. Here I am. Man. Doing it like that. And we glad you back, man. Appreciate we it, man. Glad you back, man. Uh, so with your experience, man, in radio. Yeah. Coming back to Birmingham, leaving because Mississippi your hometown, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But Lexi, so. Mississippi. Okay, so uh, I mean, next. so you just mentioned Montgomery, uh, Mississippi, uh, Jack, uh, Biloxi, and Jackson. You said, mm-hmm. and Birmingham, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I mean, you know, uh, being music background, I know we gonna dive right off into it. One of my questions for you, man, having a music background, like I said, Montgomery always had a a, a popping music scene to me, man. Okay. They always, you know, they, they've seen artists come from Montgomery and, and, and go through the trial and tribulations of an up-and-coming artist all the way to the point of being, you know, major. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, borderline major. When you go back to people like Deuce Conrad, Small Time Ballers, yeah. even yeah. Dirty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then you come on yeah. forward with the uh, 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 guy that got killed, uh, Doe Yeah. So... I want you to elaborate on, on, on just that 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 part of those cities as far as the underground music scene bubbling them. I want to start the podcast off talking about that because I know you back back when we were doing it, you know what I'm saying, back in the day real heavy in the city, mm-hmm. you were one of the ones that we that we kinda of relied on because you yeah. were actually spending yeah. Some of the local music, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, when, when a lot of people, yeah. when a lot of people weren't on, a lot of people weren't on rock with you. Hey, it comes right out of his mouth. Homie, where had to spend your music back yeah. when internet wasn't yeah. the go-to. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. look y'all that much. Yeah. Maybe once or twice. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna spend it though. No so, man. Which but, one of them cities got the pop in the scene before we go in further? Which one of those cities you think had the best scene as far as you know what I think? It, I think it's a lot of regional. 
Is there a word called regionalism? It's, it's not. It's, it's not. regions. It's, it's regions. I think it's just no. regions. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're dealing with underground music. I mean, it's going to be particular to the region in which the music comes from. So I don't want to say one region is better than the other. All of them is good. All of them are yeah. good because I mean, Montgomery. You named off some artists that was probably regional wide right. from a spectrum of Birmingham, also Mobile, Montgomery, mm -hmm. and Jackson, Mississippi, and some other uh, Louis parts of Louisiana and Arkansas because. All these cities, even though they're in different states, they're the same cities. Mm. So if it's gonna pop, a lot of times in Montgomery, you know, most times it's gonna pop in Birmingham. If you can get it out there, if it can be filtered out for it to be heard, you know, and that at that time was the legwork that you put into it. Mm. I mean, you can always become, a, you know, a well-known artist in your city, but you know, the drivers of those individuals that you named. Their drive was to do more than that city. Right, you know what I mean? They actually got out of work. They got out and worked. They got to work. And, and, but that's what you had to do. Mm -hmm. You know, they traveled across state lines and made a name for themselves. And so, what, 10, 15, almost 20 years later, you still calling their names out. Yeah, and they're still true. relevant, you know what yeah. I'm saying, to a lot of people. Yeah. So, I, I guess to answer your question, I'm just saying, I just think it's reasons because the people that you just named out, maybe people in, you know, some of the people in Mobile. You can name that people in Birmingham may not know. Yeah. Not saying they're not doing the legwork, but but Mobile and the coast and Biloxi mm -hmm. and That's New Orleans, New Orleans and, and uh, what is that? Uh, uh, Pensacola. Man, mm -hmm. they got their own scene yeah. that you yeah. may not know about. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I may not know about because I'm not you know down there listening to it all day mm -hmm. every day. But at the same time. That's why I want to say one region was popping more than the other mm -hmm. because each per each place is popping to that place. Mm -hmm. If you hadn't heard the music, eh. but those other artists that you you know a lot of them did get uh, I say regional because they may not have gotten as a as a whole populace of West Coast or a whole populace of East Coast. They might have had hit pockets yeah. of each or a uh, Midwest. But so I say regional because the South region, these you know, these folks are popular. Mm -hmm. you know, Deuce Comrades and, and Dirty Boys and all that because they had the opportunity to be signed on a major label too. Mm -hmm. So that makes it a little different. Well, yeah, I wasn't necessarily trying to put the city. Yeah, you answered it pretty good. I, I I wasn't necessarily trying to see which city was the best, but okay. I know you've seen each scene. Yeah, and I was I was just kind of. Just, just, well, you know what, you know what, too? I, I have to say this, and it all depends on that local radio station, too. Okay, it yeah. has a heavy hand in that exactly. situation. You know, yeah. you want to just keep it 100. We keep exactly. it 100. It's part, 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 part. Right. So what I'm saying is, in each each per, each region, that's what's so good, what's supposed to be so good about radio stations. Okay. Let's keep it 100. It's supposed to be, because now they, got, they, they are conglomerate owned. You know what I mean? It's not a mom and pop operation that often, because the conglomerate came in and said, we can... We can monetize mm -hmm. and manipulate things on a larger scale, so let's get that and let's do that. So the mom and pop, like a, a big box store, put the little hardware stores out of, you know, out of business in the particular neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So you don't have that, that camaraderie of, hey, what up? Mm -hmm. it's, it's the head nod. So what I'm saying is it works the same way with radio stations and artists. If you don't have a relationship, how can the, the station play the music or how, the artists, how can the artist be heard on the station? Mm -hmm. So I just believe in Mon Montgomery, to get back to the question, in Montgomery at the time, the radio station was playing local artists. Oh, heavy, so heavy. It, it, it created a scene, and I didn't realize at the time, maybe y'all can correct me mm -hmm. even after I say it, but it seems like to me the Montgomery-Atlanta connection is stronger than the Birmingham Atlanta. It, when it comes to music, yeah, because they had eighty five, they they just take eighty five north. So right I'm up saying, to the city and, so with that, yeah. with it being that accessible to Atlanta, you have more artists, like you're yeah. saying, take it, boom, and boom, boom, right boom, boom, and, and 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 vice versa, because y'all understand a lot of these, like two chains, mm -hmm. they may have touched Alabama State, either they attended mm -hmm. for a little while, or all four years, and graduated, or whatever. And maybe they're not artists, but they're music people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That played in the band and particulated to Atlanta. All that stuff goes on for that, in my opinion. It's just my oh, opinion. Yeah. And the radio station at the time would really support local artists. In Birmingham, not so much. Mm -hmm. At the time when I got, I got to Birmingham in 02. I was recruited by um, Mickey Johnson. I actually uh, 
we placed another brother that uh, passed away, Jay Knight. Yeah, yeah, Jay Knight was was, was, was a beast on the radio, yeah. right? And we was actually competitors in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, he was a promo for before Jay he came to uh, Birmingham. Oh, really? That's that's what's up. He was a real good dude. But anyway, long story short, I I was picked to to take over his spot, which was hard because at you know this when ninety five seven jams, the whole deal was promotions, promotions, big big, do it, do it. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So. The whole idea was for me to come in on a big bang, but since I was coming in the way I was coming in, replacing someone that passed away it wouldn't be in good taste. We decided not to do it that way. So I came in kind of on a side though. I got you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, angle. But when I came in, I, I told him, you know, I'm gonna do it, I wanna do it, because I was successful where I was coming from. Mm -hmm. And what made me su successful was me being into the, the, the artistry that was in the city. You know, that's what I came up in. I, I was, you know, ingratiated with those artists, slap hands, boom, homie to get on the record. I can't rap, but I might say something. Yeah. I could do, like you said, do some promo for some artists or some drops, blah, blah, blah. So when I came to Birmingham, I'm like, look, we need to put these local artists on, man. Because that's when I asked around what was going on with the station. That's what I heard. Oh, man, they don't do no local music. They don't da 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 I'm like, it's crazy. Because that's what makes your city. Mm -hmm. That's the sound of your, okay, when you go to New Orleans, what you going to hear? You're going to hear that bounce. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to hear that. And now that yeah. thing is everywhere. It's in almost twerk. Twerk. All of that yeah. stuff. But see, when I was coming up going to New Orleans, that was just what it was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what, And you, the radio station, every song got the same beat. Yeah. <laughs> after, yeah. uh, what is it? After 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock, if you, if you listen to the radio station, yeah. it's the same song. I mean, it's different songs, but the same yeah, beat. So my point beat. is, that's their identity. Yeah, right. That's their city. The radio station supported that because the people, that's what they wanted, right? So, it, you know, it kind of worked both ways, man. You got to have that radio station that's going to be supportive of the artists in that region or in that radio city, radio vicinity. You know, it goes, it goes back and forth. Okay. Because a lot of people will say, well, the radio station don't do this. But then a lot of times, artists, music is built garbage. It just is what it is. That, that can be you know, possible. the radio station can't play everything. That can be possible. The radio station is, is in business for listenership. So if something is on the radio station that doesn't sound good, don't have the right flow, the hook is, is crazy. So you gotta be quiet. The, you gotta, you gotta take it off because the whole point is to make money, right? Oh, well, you better blow it up before it gets Exactly. Out and make so, them on. You know, it works both ways. Yep. Well, let me ask you this. Now, you said you've been in Birmingham since 2002. Yeah. How long have you actually been in radio itself? Because, shit, that's 18 years. I don't say that, man. Yeah, you had to yeah, say it that yeah, way. But this uh, I always say, yeah, that will always yeah, say the year. Yeah. I don't never calculate. Yeah. I know you like to calculate. I've been radio. But, but you know, with a wood loan in education, it's hard oh. not to be able to configure shit real fast. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, so, so how long have you been in radio, and what inspired you to get in radio? I've been in radio since, ooh, how long have I been? Ra crazy as may sound, this is about to sound crazy. Well, that nigga know. He just don't want to say the year. Nah. Send uh, the uh, No. <laughs> Flashlight was number one <laughs> on the radio. I'm he, trying to think, what was the number one song when I got in radio? No, I got in radio when, when I was at uh, Mississippi State. I was mm -hmm. at Mississippi State University. Um, what was I? Freshman or sophomore? I can't remember. But anyway, it was. Uh, Shit, that's a blessing to get into that, young. It was 90. Okay, wait a minute. I'm trying to think, y'all. Hold on. It What is this? This is 2020. Ooh, I've been in radio since 1994? No, 92. I was a sophomore. So 20, How many years is that? It's 28 years. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Years. I've been in radio for 28 years. Damn, and a matter of fact, the first radio broadcast I did because I had to train. The way I trained was I had to do two overnight shifts. In uh, Columbus, uh, Mississippi, WACR, the strong song station mm. uh. for the Golden Triangle, WACR. That's what the little deal was, right? So um, it was for Columbus, Tupelo, and Starkville. That's the Golden Triangle. Sound like a nigga named Cecil <laughs> on that station. Uh, <laughs> but that's what I that's what I yeah. did. But it was a it was a it was an off you know uh, mainstream I guess urban station now, mm -hmm. uh, what you would call them now. But uh, yeah, man, that's that's when I started. I had to do two. To Jay uh, Thomas oh, uh, trained me for two overnight shifts. I'll never forget. And I had to be at class each morning at 8. So I worked from 12 midnight to 6 to drive from Columbus to Starkville. It was a 45-minute drive. Mm -hmm. So I would be up all night, then go to class, 
class is, then try to get a right quick nap, on. you know what I'm saying, and then do it again. Mm. But right. it was so, it was crazy because I had never did, did nothing like that, never seen anything. I, you know, I love music. Mm. But, shoot, man, I saw um, how they created stuff. And I would stick around for the morning man to come through and see how he, at that time, it was no digitals. Mm. Only, mm. it was a card machine that you had to, we had to pull music. So, like, if, if I was relieving you, you had to set out my first 30 minutes of music. But the music is on cards. Mm. Mm. Or CDs. Mm. Straight CDs. And it's crazy to even think of that now because everything is on a computer. Everything on that. Well, mm. most stations. So on computer, computer. So how you and programs. So when you used to play records, you used to mix them live when you played records. No, I, I didn't. I didn't play records. No, I ain't play no forty five or thirty three. He's trying to see the way. No, man, but yeah, they had real to real machines. They had to cue them stuff up, what? man, and it just used to be phenomenal to see a man or a woman. But at this case, it was a man. The one man morning show was crazy. But the way he did it, man, he would record his voice. And the commercial break, or while the song was going, he would slow it up or speed it up and interview him. It was just the craziest thing I had never seen. It was just, and it was just mesmerizing. And I would stay there, supposed to be going to class, but I would stay there and watch him because he was the most popular DJ in the yeah, in the, the time. Golden Triangles at the time. And uh, you know, eventually a train became my boss. Mm -hmm. He wasn't the greatest boss in the world, but he was. <laughs> I learned some lessons of how not to be a boss. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not mentioning his name, but he know who he yeah, is if man. he's ever watching. But Cecil, uh, you talking about your Cecil? <laughs> but I'm just saying, man. Uh, that was that was uh, what was that? Like I said, I think that was '92. I think that was a sophomore. Yeah, I think that was '92. But see that, and that's interesting though, because that don't sound right. Because from '92 to 2020, that's 28 years. What changes have you seen? In music, like in uh, piggybacking off what Sam said, mm -hmm. far as with the independent music being played, what differences you see in that now? Like, do you see a lot more support from radio stations, or is it still kind of the same way it always been? Well, first off, you gotta look at it. Radio, most radio stations, again, are in it to win it, are in it yeah. to make money. So, you gotta look at it from the angle of the radio station. Is I, you know. I'm not really trying to play independent artists. Yeah. For what? I mean, I may give them a a slot on a Saturday or, mm -hmm. you know, I would show to play some independent, but I'm not trying to do that. It ain't bringing no revenue in here. Mm -hmm. Nobody calling for that artist. You know, that artist got a buzz in the city. That's different, but, mm -hmm. and you're not playing it. That's, that's different. But I'm saying, mm -hmm. if you're just an independent artist and you're just moving around, I mean, you got to do stuff for yourself too. So radio stations are in it to play hit music because hit music bring listeners. Listeners bring mm -hmm. revenue because commercials need listeners to go to get their products and blah, 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 blah. So chain reaction. it's a chain yeah. reaction. So that's what I'm saying. So to answer your question, I think it's always going to be the same. I don't think that part of it is going to change. So that's why you got different avenues of places to get music. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So that's, that's why other avenues was developed and now you got different apps. Mm -hmm. It's streaming. streaming sites, mm -hmm. all of that was created because radio, they in it. I mean, they in it for you a profit. It you can't play it all because yeah. there's so many creative people out here that's doing great music. But then you know, with radio, it's slotted. Boom. Yeah. It's slotted. Boom. You know, I remember we growing up. Let's think about this crazy, especially um, when MTV first came out, man. Even though MTV played all the what is it, top forty. I don't even think they had top 40 charts. And see, that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. You got top 40, you got country, you got country west, and you got, you, know, you got all these different charts. So all the music is now segregated, mm -hmm. yep. you know? It's, it's not separated, it's segregated because, you know, what's the instant with old buddy? They took him off the charts because they figured he wasn't uh, the country. Uh, yeah, nah, look, nah, you're talking about the one with the cat suit. Yeah. yeah look, nah, <laughs> look, nah, look, look like nah, a character nah, on Mortal Kombat. Oh, oh, what oh, they, oh, they, oh, they, yeah, they yeah, say, yeah, man, yeah, on uh, Facebook? Uh, yeah. But I'm just saying, you know, um, I just think with radio, man, it's going to be so vanilla, man. It's going to stay, you know, you're going to have some station that's going to get out there, uh, you know, like Jams was in the beginning. They did crazy stuff because they had to because they had to separate itself from what was already what was here, already which was when, you know what I'm saying? That's what people were used to. So they had to come in the market and create a big stir to get the attention. But, you know, 
Now radio stations don't have to do it for real because shoot, y'all them folks that laid off at iHeart, man, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, they see and that that leads me to what I was about to say next is that do you think radio is as effective now as it was in the nineties and the early two thousand, considering we got all those streaming sites oh, yeah. and YouTube and all that stuff, you think it's still as effective as it is? No now? doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Um mm-hmm. radio is gonna be the po- most popular avenue for people to get music, man. If you know why? You wanna know why? Because it's free. Boom. <laughs> well, it's free. You ain't gonna have no I mean, but that. the thing about radio is, it's so convenient. It's like a, it's like a, a doormat that you walk across every day. Mm-hmm. You don't notice that doormat. You just notice you are gonna wipe your feet. Not saying you wipe your feet on radio. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is, you good. take it for granted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's there. Free. It's free. You but you don't even realize you're listening to it when you listen to it. You hear different music when you. But and see, radio. What happens is, radio jumps you so to speak, in the real world, right? Mm-hmm. You're in the real world. What I mean by the real world, you hear, say for instance, on our show, Benny, we got we have Art Franklin in the morning giving you news, right? You have mm-hmm. us doing what we do, mm-hmm. uh, Chris doing what he does, T. Carson, but we're all in that, we all live in the city. We talk all about know current events. Current events. Yeah. You know, we talk to each other, amongst each other. We see each other. We hang out at different events. Like we mm. promote different concerts and contests. So what I'm saying, it's in the world. Mm. It's what's happening. It's relative. Mm. But when you go to your app, you go to your different source of other, that's your world. Just straight music. That's just you. You're yeah. not in the world. You're not in the current events. Because that's not what you're looking for at that time. And that's good. And it's a lane for that. Yeah. But it's also a huge lane for radio because, again, it's easy, it's convenient, and most importantly, it's free. It's all around us, whether we know it. it I mean, somebody's gonna have on, somebody gonna have a radio station on somewhere. Well, in information, in sports station, yeah. station, blue station, country and western station, man. And everybody don't want to pay them nine ninety nine a month. Exactly. But then some people want to get what out of the world, yeah. and they pay that, and they listen to it. But then they will come back in the world to get whatever they need. And see what's relevant at the and time. And see what's relevant yeah. at the time. So yeah. they're like hitting that scan when you're traveling, you're trying to see what's going on in the city that the you city. that yeah. you riding through. So there somebody like on that radio kids. gonna say something about what's happening out there, you know what I'm saying? We say live local lit. Yeah. That, that, that shit actually means something. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? I agree. So I mean that's what you know, hopefully a, a radio station, but you know, again, they are in it to make money and because of they've gotten so big and got so many stations under one umbrella, it means people's jobs duplicate. And yeah. if your job is duplicating, why should I pay both of y'all to do the same job? Hmm. Yeah. If I can pay one of y'all or none of y'all to do the, the jobs, and that's what's happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's just that what is that called? Technology? Yeah, that's true. Advancement sometimes is great, you know. When they say the industrial revolution yeah, changes man. a lot of so, stuff, man. You know, a lot of stuff. So, mm-hmm. man, what's up? How long have you had the Golden Voice? Yeah, I was about to say. How long have I had the Golden Voice? Did you have a, a, a voice box uh, surgery? And that's, that was, you born like that? No. No. <laughs> no. That's a blessing. <laughs> no, man. I thought you were just doing it on the radio. Yeah, you talk like that everywhere. No. Everywhere. I don't talk everywhere. like that. I, I just, I don't know. Um, you don't have a radio. If you heard my first air check, mm-hmm. I was trying to sound like what I've heard mm-hmm. on the radio. So it wasn't originally this. It wasn't this I'm idea. just saying. No, I mean, you know, this is how I look at it. If you're new to something, right, mm-hmm. you got to find your lane. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, as I talk to my friend in the back, but that's fine. We got a camera back there. Too. Okay, but what I'm saying is, if 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 you're new to something, you got to find your lane. You got to find your niche, your, whatever it is. But you're gonna emulate somebody that you look up to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. I don't know if I mean you guys being barbers, maybe you say yay and nay. But I mean, before you got into barbers, then you look at somebody and was like, dang, he he cuts well or she cuts well or whatever the case. You grew up in the barber shop, Exactly. Who inspired you to be a barber? Yeah. Right, so it's the same thing. So what I'm saying is, when I w- w- was first starting, man, I was trying to find me. And so my, my the, the most popular guy on the radio station in Jackson, his name is The Mailman, he does a morning show in, in Jackson. And so he was like the ish niche. I'm talking about, this was crazy. And so I had the oppor- opportunity when I, when I um, worked at uh, WJMI, 
in uh, Jackson, Mississippi to work under him. So I did all the weekend shifts, right? Mm -hmm. And so I used to, it's crazy because I used to get so irritated. But then, as, you know, as I got older, of course, when you're young, you young, young gun want to be over the world and don't want to hear it. But everybody used to say, man, you sound just like mailman. I'm like, no, I don't. I'm not trying to sound like no mailman. mailman. I don't want to sound like mailman. That's mailman. I want to sound like me. But they kept saying, man, you sound just like mailman. Boy, you sound just like mailman. Did you realize before everybody started but then, saying it? But then I realized I probably did sound like mailman for two reasons. First, I was the, I was the young guy like mailman was. And secondly, I used to listen to mailman like everybody else. Exactly. So I probably did sound like the mailman. You know what I mean? So that's what when they I, but I used to look at it like I don't want that. But then I thought about it. Wait a minute, mailman is the shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, yeah. wait a minute. Time yeah. out. Give me a twenty. He the yeah. shit. So if I sound like him, then that ain't that bad. Right. So yeah. long story short, man, I just think it, the longer I got in it, the more I found other like another person that I um. Uh, is uh, my man Buck Wild. The Buck way, Wild, that Buck what, Wild, the way that his delivery and the way he would it. ask questions and it's a lot of stuff that I just just remember watching him when I came to Birmingham. You know what I'm saying? Buck uh, Wild, and, and of course, uh, 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 my man Bartel Bartel. Oh, just, oh yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, boy, oh my gosh, rest in peace, man. Know, when Bar when, let me tell you something about Bartel. Bartel wow. was the coolest dude I've ever met. In radio, besides my boss Stan, the man Brass. But Bartell, Bartell, as far as like, because Bartell was a couple of years older than I, about three, three years maybe. Mm -hmm. So I, we was like, boom. I was like, when I first came in, I never, I never forget it. Came into the radio, he said, "What's up?" <laughs> you know Bartell me. cool. Dude. Oh boy, he, you know he had chain, white t-shirt. Oh, you home? I've been listening. I've been hearing about <laughs> you. You, you pretty tight, man. I heard your air checks. If you don't know, air checks is what we send out. It's like a resume, yeah, but it's, yeah. it's your audio it's a for radio um, personnel. It's called an air check. I heard your air check. You good, bro? Man, be good. He used to have a briefcase. Boom, had a silver briefcase. You don't want no, like a whole lot of money briefcase. Had his yeah. had his <laughs> pistol in that joint. Had his thing. Mm -hmm. And man, he'll be out. All right, man, have a good show. You gonna be good. Don't even worry about it. That's when we were downtown yeah. looking over at the medical yeah, form yeah, building. Yeah, yeah. And so, man, yeah, Bartel, man, gave me a lot of it, but he was so cool, and I used to just watch how he would handle his business on the radio, man, and how he would talk to his audience. Oh, he was tough. And he was just, I was like, man, I had never seen that before, because I was used to da 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 But he was more like, you know, yeah, he just talked to you. Yeah, he was yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? He was, he was doing podcasts before podcasts, man. He was yeah. doing them on the radio. Yeah, relationship with You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I kind of just, I kind of soaked that little stuff up. And, you know, from each person... Man, I try to learn, man. Yeah, it makes sense. I try to learn. You know, I try to learn from any and every if it's possible, if it's relevant, you know, even if it's not relevant. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, you can't, you can't help but win, man. When so you I, learn so to answer that question, um, Eugene, mm -hmm. is, man, I, it just developed. I guess that's the answer. No. Time yeah. job. Because when I was younger, man, I used to get mad. I just thought about this. I'm going to share this with y'all. When, when I was younger... I used to hate it because when folks would call my moms, they'd be they'd think I was my sister. Mm. I'm like, no, this is Jerome. What are you doing? <laughs> so I try to, you know, get my voice lower. They're like, oh, okay, where your mom at? <laughs> I used to hate that. <laughs> be honest. But look what I'm doing now. I'm on the radio. And you ask the question about my. So that boy's worked out for you. And, and I got a big Adams app, apple. I used to get teased by my Adams apple, too. I didn't grow up more into it. When I was young, it was that thing would stick out there. Well, we know you're a dude. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, all the way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here's something around that look like thumbs and shit. So, hey. <laughs> yeah, man, man, man. yeah, they be taking If you had to break down a good radio host into five categories, Ooh. four four categories, what would be those categories? And um and, and which one is the most important? Which one is is flexible? Like what? How would you? That's how a good question, but I don't know how many categories. I I try to answer the best way I can. I think you uh I think you must be uh, uh related, related what relative is what I'm mm -hmm. trying to say. They're relatable and and relatable, but relative definitely relatable to the mm -hmm. audience. Like you can't be try, you can't be trying to talk above the audience. Mm -hmm heads and try to be all of this and all of that you can't do that i think you just need to uh feel the audience's vibe like before i before i got on the radio i i was in birmingham i stayed at the redmont 
and uh, they put me up in the red mine. So I was in Birmingham, man. They liked you, so no. I'm telling you, they, they recruited your boy. Yeah, you think I was, was, playing, I was crazy in Jackson, uh, Mississippi. You better call somebody over there. Yeah, 601, yeah. call somebody. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. I don't toot my own horn. I'm just being real. But uh, they recruited me to come over here. Uh, my numbers were phenomenal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? For Like, straight up. But anyway, um, so I was at Redmont, and I had the opportunity, rags to riches, uh, Worked at he stills up he's still up there, Great. but Justin Rags uh, Rags we call him Rags Rich DJ Rags Rich. Anyway, he was um, in promotions and he came and uh, he picked me up from the hotel. Mm-hmm. Never forget, Young Deal was doing a remote or something, doing something at the uh, in Titusville. Went up to that community center. I just never forget this like it was like yesterday. And anyway, we rolled around. Asked I asked questions about the station, so I had like two or three days to get acclimated with the city. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? See, riding around. Chris called me, rolled me around everywhere. Hey, man. Hey, man. You don't need to do this. Nah, nah. Oh, this thing you need to be. Nah, Chris Chrissy. Mm-hmm. So, anyway. So. He had to pop in a little song then. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. was, it was forming. It was forming. Okay. Oh, Chris so, this is 02 now. This is 02. So, oh, this, okay. is what, this is a minute ago. PBLS is going to kick in. <laughs> oh, Chris was at jams then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, so, he was. He, so, because me and Chris met, we used to have a record pool. we we'll be in a record pool together. It, of DJs. Mm. This thing's small, pool. man. This stuff's small, pool. believe it or not. So we was all in a record pool of DJs, and we have conference call every week, maybe twice a week. Mm. What records we was going to play, what records was hot in our cities, blah, blah, blah. And we share that information. And that's how another way independent artists got shared at that time. Yeah, right. We would have record yeah. pools. We'd have conference calls. We'd talk about records, who's hot in the city, blah, 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 blah. But we didn't know at the time, dude, that was <laughs> handling the, the record call was getting, was getting all the money. Mm. It's crazy, but that's another story. But, but, um, was riding around the city, man, and to trying to ask you, answer your question. Just was relative, just to be relative. We did, I did all of that to be relative. No, the pulse of the city. I ain't never you lived here before. Love, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I never been uh, deal and Miss Cat. May she rest in peace. Took me to Platinum. Uh, met Bartels when Bartel was hosting that thing. Man, ooh, that thing yeah, was crazy, was boy. Oh, my God. Yeah, Little story about that. I went the wrong way trying to find Platinum. Dude was like, dog, where you at? I was like, I'm on uh, 2nd Avenue. Platinum on 2nd Avenue, right? Yeah. I'm on 2nd yeah. Avenue. He said, you on 2nd No. You on 2nd Avenue? I said, man, I'm on 2nd Avenue. He said, let me ask you this question, homie. Does it have a little S or a little N by the 2nd Avenue? I said, it got a little S. He said, ooh, you on the wrong 2nd Avenue. I said, I ain't know, right? <laughs> so long story short, got to the Platinum, man, kicked it real hard. But like you said, start relating to the DJ. Lee was in there at the time. Well, DJ Lee I did ran in the lead all the day, too. Really? Man. Yeah, man. Man, DJ what up, DJ Lee? Lee? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. He said he, said he got a ago. brand new... A uh, 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 ride full of equipment, goddamn. He said he ready to set this bitch on fire. I, that Lee, time to do it. let's get it. Yeah, <laughs> let's yeah. get it. But look, well, Lee was doing his thing at Platinum, and I was up up in there just feeling, listening to Bart, how he did again, his cadence and everything, how he hosted was different. That's what I was about to add. Yeah, platinum, all of that. Platinum. The cadence. Yeah, the, like, platinum, yeah. the cadence is different. Be relative. Um, you could be insightful, maybe witty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, be witty. Yeah. Be able to take a joke as well as you give it, give a joke, I and be it. about your craft and be knowledgeable of whom you're playing as far as artists. You know what right. I mean? Like you don't want to be on the station and you don't know what the hell going on, because yeah. then you're not being really relative to the audience. So you got to know your, and that's part of knowing your, knowing your audience. And what, what are those intangible things too? Those things you kind of just got to be born with. I think uh, luck. Well, I hate to say luck. I don't like to say oh, that. Lord. You know, the niggas just said intangible. Yeah, I heard that. I was one. I saw how Sam did. He was like, nigga. He kind of moved a little bit. Hey, T.I. T.I. You know, you'll get a little T.I. action on the thing. Right now, we got ludicrous on this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Hell, that's what I'm saying. All right, Luke. Hey, 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 Luke. No, nah, but to, to try to answer your question, I had the opportunity, I had the fortune, I should say, or the blessing to have a mom that absolutely enjoy music, mm-hmm. right? So you never get tired. I don't. I'm talking about absolutely enjoys music. Like, she used to have us, I tell this a lot, man, she used to have us on Saturdays after she allowed us to finish watching cartoons and then Soul Train would come on. Shoot, TV go off. Time for TV to go off. Pump, Music soul, pumped up. Yeah. And then housework get going. And so that's what I grew up, yeah, man. Yeah. So I grew up 
fortunately, with a, with a different, you know, she had all, all kinds of 45s and albums, and she would play them, and, she, you know, she, you know, working mom, so she'd be at work, and my sister's supposed to be sitting me. She'd be off in her room writing her diary. I'd be in all her, her record collection. Yeah. So I think you got to be a little uh, inquisitive about the music. So some people may be inquisitive. They may want to play the music with an instrument. As I may have been a little bit too lazy for all of that. I know you told me you play instrument, you play instrument. I don't play any instrument, but I got a, 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 a for ear for music, right? right? I can right, hear right. stuff. I can hear melodies, and I can tell you, oh, that's in that song. I did it today. I listened to a, a record I had never heard before, and I'm like, oh, they got that from X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can just hear it in the, in the, in the, and I can hear if a song is going to do well on the radio. I can hear if it's going to do a I on the radio. I can hear that thing going to go straight to the roof. I can hear it. Mm -hmm. I can just hear it because it, it, it has to have certain things. And, and, and when you hear a record, you should hear a record between one, two, three, maybe five seconds. You'll know if it's a hit or not. You right. It don't take long. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I just think you got to, you got to, if you want to say that's the intangibles, you're going to have to have that drive for that. And mm -hmm. I like to talk a lot. I come from a father that talked in his personality. Right. I wish y'all, I always say this, I wish y'all, I would tell Benny all the time, I wish y'all could have met him. I mean, because I lost him in, in uh, uh, October. But Sorry, I wish y'all could have met him because the man was just, I, I'd be quiet. You know, I let him, you, you do all the talking, uh -huh. all the laughs. And then my brother is the same way. Um, he is uh, hilarious. He's the real comedian. Yeah. But I get all my love, you know what I'm saying? I guess my wit and from my mom's, because she's a silent killer mm -hmm. on that kind of stuff. So I just think you just had them, the them, them, the intent, them the intangibles. Yep, I'm the youngest, man. Okay, I'm the, so I'm the really they say the best for last. You got a chance to study everything. Every, that's what I'm saying. Everybody so I absorb, so my you. brother, man, my one brother's a singer, right? And another brother play, plays any instrument that you could think of, and he played it by ear, taught himself. And I used to have, I used to watch that. You know what I'm saying? I used to watch him That's practice. true gift. And learn and listen to a song on the radio. And I'm like, hey, 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 Reggie, man, go on and play this song. And he'd be like, all right, let's he do it. He never was in a band? No, he had his own band. He had all of that. No, I'm saying in school. He never learned music through. No. Hmm. Oh, shit. No. That's crazy. Yeah. That's genius. That's, that's yeah. what's called genius. Yeah, if, if so I got the opportunity. Play like. Yeah, so I had the blessings of seeing all of that, man. I think, and I look back because my dad was a truck driver, man. Man, was a truck driver till he couldn't drive anymore. You feel me? So, and I used to, I used to have the opportunity and the blessings again to go with him every summer. I would be on the road with him. So mm -hmm. you know, truck drivers have radios. Mm -hmm. His mm -hmm. handle at the time was Lil Britches. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because my name ended up being Lil Homie. Little Britches. Little Britches, that was his name. And he used to be on the radio, y'all. He used to be on the radio, it's crazy. Shit. But he'd be on that, <laughs> breaking one nine, breaking one nine. He'd change his voice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Can't nobody see him. Yeah. And he'd be his own personality talking to these other truck drivers. Ooh. And it was, and I, you know, I'm, I'm absorbing this stuff, man. Not realizing I'm absorbing it. Yeah. But I'm, like you used to, like you always say, them kids be absorbing stuff. Yeah. We don't realize yeah. it. That's yeah. the prime times. And I used to be in that rig with him, man, and he'd be switching them gears. Break, break one nine, looking forward to him, four nine, 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 just going in. And then he'd come back, so you all right, son? And I'm like, damn, he just changed up like that. But I ain't never think of it until I got older and got on the radio and was like, damn. So I, all that stuff meshed in together, man. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff meshed in together, bro. And I just think, uh, you know, with the characteristic of being a good, a good host, I think you need that personality. I think you need that knowledge of audience. Um, I think you need that cadence because you don't nobody want to listen to somebody that's one. Uh, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's annoying. Well, that sound like you know action. You, turn yeah, you know, that's annoying. You know, people, if they're going to listen to you, they're going to listen for you to bring them up. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't listen for you to bring them down. That's why you Express, turn on And then I boy. try, and then a good, I think too, you got to know how to ride with the music. You know, vibe with the music. So if the beat is boom, 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 you don't want to be way up here, and you definitely don't be way down there. You want to ride with yeah. the music. They're like you dancing with the music. You want to ride with the music when you talk. And like rappers ride with the with the music yeah. when they flow and when they, it's the same, it's, it's just different cadences. Right. That's all it is. It's all verbal. It's all verbal. Okay. So I hope I answered answer the question. All right, so I heard you just kind of rewinding back a little bit. When you first got in the radio, you said you was doing nights and weekends. Oh, I was doing, yeah, yeah, nights and weekends. Yeah, you doing nights and weekends. Yeah, yeah. How did you end up with where you are now 
with V nine four nine on the morning show because that's a like in radio, you know. Oh, that's, that's a, a big step, yeah. That's a, that's but a, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't happen. Like I just skipped yeah, to it, one yeah, to the other now. Yeah. So, so if you, so if you would, <laughs> okay, tell the listeners here on the Barbershop Stories the podcast <laughs> and viewers twenty nine and the viewers and uh-huh. the people who ain't clicked the on the shit and just scroll by that won't give us a motherfucking view. We see you too, nigga. I see you. But uh, uh, well, uh, kind of walk us through how it got to this point. First of all, V949, Home Team Morning Show, 6 to 10, Monday through Friday. I'll make sure y'all tune in. How did you get to this point from nights, weekends, to, you know what, morning show? Because that's a, that's a night and day difference. How did you get to that? Walk us through that. Um, okay. Well, I started, well, first off, as I told you, over the started selling dope back in 1996. <laughs> hey, you know me and uh Mr. Big same, shared the same birthday. Oh yeah, that was my guy, man. What? Yeah. November 5th. May he rest in peace. Um, yeah. but me and Mr. Big, we had part birthday parties together and everything. But anyway, um, I started in Columbus, Mississippi. I trained doing overnights, and then I um, I um had the opportunity to do weekends. Seven to midnight mm-hmm. in, in Columbus. Seven to, seven, no, seven to I'm 10. sorry, six to 12. That's what yeah. it was. Six to 12 on Saturdays. And Sundays, I want to say 10 to two. It was something like that. No, because church was on, so it had to be after church services. Well, anyway, I did those two days, right? So um, it's crazy. When I did in Columbus, Mississippi, the program director at the time, we didn't have a live mix show. They had these things called super tracks. Mm-hmm. They came on disc mm-hmm. and they and, and they had a playlist of the songs, the artist and the title, how long it was, <laughs> and the break, what it means the DJ could talk. So what was happening, nobody would be talking on these breaks, right? Mm-hmm. So, me being me, the the young gun in the in the thing, I'm like, why won't nobody talk? It's a break and Here's the opportunity to talk. So I would talk. I would be, hey, what's up? My name was David, David D. I hated that name, but I'm sharing with y'all. Mm-hmm. David D. Hey, this is David D. Blah, 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 the strong song <laughs> station. What's up? It's Saturday night, all this old stuff, right? So I was doing it, trying to fill in my flow. And then I said, you know what? I'm finna take phone calls. <laughs> yeah. But didn't get not now permission from the program director. Mm. Right? That's, that's, that's no, no, number one. Always listen to your program. Try to listen to your program director. You're not going to always agree with your program director, but try to listen. Anyway, so um, messed around, and he called me up and asked me, what the hell? No, excuse me. He said, what the fuck you doing? Well, I'm like, uh. Same hell the fuck, yeah. He was pretty mad. Oh, yeah. He was like, no, that's how he was. He'd call you up and cuss you out, and then he'll say, those dumbass Mississippians, <laughs> do stuff like that. That's what he would do. Black dude from South Carolina, but you call him but anyway. Um, so he like, was, the, like them geeches was much better. Exactly. So so what I'm saying is so um, they had them breaks. They may have been 30 seconds. They'll tell you the length of 45. So I would run out of stuff to say. So I said, well, well, I'm gonna put folks on the radio. So I, boom. Who this? Hey, this is uh, X, Y, and Z. Where you calling from? I'm calling from blah, blah, blah. Because this is what I heard when I used to listen to my man Davey D in New Orleans um, at the radio station. They used to put folks on the app. Mm-hmm. You know, this is when I listened when I was in um, Biloxi. Uh, they, at uh, WTAM, Gulfport, they used to put people on the air. Mm-hmm. You see? And the Jackson, they put people on the air. So I'm like, why ain't nobody on the air? This don't make sense. So I'm putting people on the air. So my pro, anyway, back to the program director. He called me. I was doing all this, kicking it. Folks laughing. We having a good time. I'm hitting them breaks perfect. Not over talking the music because it's right there. So I know for 30 seconds I need to talk and mm-hmm. be done with it, right? So I was doing all of that. So he called me. What the hell you doing? Who gave you the motherfucking permission to do this? And you Mississippi, y'all think y'all all of that? Da 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 da. I can't believe this. And da 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 da. I said, well, damn man, my bad. I ain't know. I'm just in here having a good time. I said, man, it's boring up in here, man. It's boring up in here, babysitting and listening to this music. I'm trying to get in. You know what's happening? He said, I tell you what. He said, it actually sounds good. But hmm. next time, get my motherfucking permission. Yeah. And hung the phone up. And I was like, okay. Boy, that nigga was 6'12". So he was that bigger than me. Was he was, he was, he was pop Bell and, and Little Shoulders. Oh, yeah, and now oh, I look back on oh, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. But so I, I, that's how that part. So what I'm saying is I um, 
<laughs> then went to uh, Jackson State University, got on the Jazz State. So when I went to Jackson State University, dude, it was a total difference because I couldn't do none of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I had to play jazz music. You just had to play the music. I had to play the music. My program director at the time, Bobby, Miss Bobby was like, uh, you sound good, but you ain't on 99 Jams yet. <laughs> you need to do WJSU. This is jazz. Yeah. So we talking to jazz people. We talking to professors. We ain't doing all of that other stuff. Because I would be on there, yeah, this, this, this. <laughs> like I was saying. Like exactly. exactly. So what I say, you got to know your audience. <laughs> That's a lesson. You got to know your audience because, again, it's about money. No so you had all these doctors and lawyers and high what they say, pollution people Hi-lu-lu-sha. that's li- listening, and 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 WJSU is uh, what they call uh, what they call it underwriters. Yeah. They get underwriters, so they get you know they had to get pledges and stuff. So I was going against the money. Mm-hmm. Um, Can we get a little uh, jazz homie? A little jazz. I'm trying to think of what what I used to have to say. <laughs> Hold on, let me think. Of, he talked to him about jazz. <laughs> I got to think of the, 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 what the what the line was. Hold on, man. Hey, I mean, you here with Davey? <laughs> oh, well, I got it. Yeah. This is uh-uh. Davey D. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I used my real name. I wasn't Davey D. I couldn't be Davey D. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Okay, it was all real. I was in college. I was at Jackson State. So it was, it was, I'll tell you what it was. And I came on after, dang, I'm just thinking, boy, you made me come. I came on after the newsman, and he had such the, boy, let me tell you something about radio. It's reasons why people are on the radio. Hmm. They may sound good, but they may not always look the part they sound. Uh, Let's keep it 100. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, hey, and with radio, with radio, the thing about radio is, well, now it's different, but it definitely then there was no there was no film and no radio. Yeah. So what I'm saying, you come in the radio station any kind of way, but you gonna sound good because people are gonna yeah, they're gonna per- perceptualize how you look because how you sound. So you coming in some shorts, flip flops, your head tied up. I've seen all of this, really? but you make and sound good. So in the mind of the person that's listening, oh my God, right? Yeah. Well, the dude that um, big, big. that I relieved every morning, he was the newsman. That dude sound incredible, mm-hmm. but that look crazy, boy. <laughs> but it was he was cool as I can't remember his name. But anyway, I followed him, so I had to use my real name, and it was uh, it was uh. How I used to say that it was, uh, it was good morning. It was, it was like something like good morning, good morning. It's dog. I used to say that it's Jerome in the. Mo- I forget how it was, it was Jerome in morning. Somehow I made it rhyme, man. That's, so so Martin story and shit. Jerome, Jerome, wrong, wrong. That's wrong, wrong. Oh, I've been I've been roaming wrong yeah, since yeah, my, yeah, since I've been, been on Earth. So Martin and story and shit. Oh, oh yeah, wrong, I've been roaming wrong, wrong since. Forever. We gonna call Courtney. My uncle used to call me Roman Rome. See, we can get a lot of lady. suit. Oh yeah, that's another thing. My wife said that all the time. Why would I ever call you? You got all kinds of names. You got all kinds of names. You got a lot of names. But yeah, man. So on the jazz station, um, it was something like "Good morning, it's Jerome in the morning." And something crazy on eighty-eight point five uh, WJSU, uh, number one source for jazz. That's what it was. But I don't remember how. I can't do it now. Man. Um, but anyway, I did that. <laughs> I, I, I wonder if it's on YouTube. You think it's on YouTube? I gave you some upright bass now. I can't remember. I'm really trying to remember, but I can't remember. I put them in the field. I didn't put it out of my head. I guess I'm going to have to go back and think. But anyway, I worked at WJSU, man, and dude did not want to hire me, man. Mr. McAdoo, rest in peace. He did not want to hire me, man. I thought it would be easy because I worked at a radio station. A yeah, real radio, station, yeah. uh, uh, a contemporary radio station in Columbus, and I can't tell you, it's easy to get a job. Mm-hmm. Man, I went to WJSU, he was like, man, if you ain't go to school here, son, you can't work here. Damn. So you ain't go to That's Jackson State. That's how he said State. I said, damn. damn. You didn't go to Jackson State. You just. I eventually enrolled, but this was before I enrolled. So okay. I was going to Mississippi State. Yeah, I was just going to ask yeah. you, did you go to both? Oh, I skipped all that. I transferred to Jackson State, came home, I played case, I found the pie. Uh, today I died. My mom said she yeah. did all of that. Blue. You can come, come on home because you your grades ain't what they should be. You can stay or you can come home, and I got you. And I, I chose to come home okay. and finish at the, at uh, Jackson State University. So mm-hmm. I, I eventually did get in school. I got on the radio, did the jazz station, and um, I met a guy that was in my class, Maurice uh, Williams. And Maurice's name last name was anyway. Maurice was on the radio W A G G, which is the gospel station. Um, I said W A G G. Excuse me, it's not W A G. That's here. It was W. Uh, uh, what is it? W O A D. 
That's it. W O A D. That's the that's the gospel station. And if you're on the east side of the Mississippi, it's gonna be W. If you're on the west side of the Mississippi River, Mississippi River is K. You know that, huh? I just I just blinged y'all. If you're on the if you on the east side of the Mississippi River, the radio station is gonna be W. Because radio stations are named after usually the people that own them. You know what I'm saying? So if you own, that's how they did. That's how they used to do radio stations. So like W A G G was uh, uh, A G G Gaston, with the W A G G. You just told me something. Yeah. I dropped some downs on it. I knew the A G, but I, I didn't know the W and, and so the K. And so the west side yeah. of yeah. the yeah. Mississippi yeah. is K. So out west, you are gonna have all K's. Mm. And mm. I think in Canada, it's it's C. I can't remember. I think it's something like that oh, in Canada. Them, but yeah, but that's how they did, that's why they that's how they do that. But I was uh I met Maurice. Maurice was in the same uh, communications class at Jack State, and I knew he worked at the gospel station. The gospel station is affiliated with 99 Jams, which is the hip hop station. And uh this station I listened to throughout high school, you know, junior high, the whole nine. So it was the station in, in the city. But they flipped it. You know how uh uh 957 Jams Flip. Well, they really didn't flip. They just came on, and the way they came on, well, they flipped jams. Jams did it first. The model was, believe it or not, people. The model was WJMI in Jackson, Mississippi, to have a southern hip hop station. It was Jackson, Mississippi. Birmingham came on, and Atlanta came on with Hot 97.7 at the time. But Jackson, Mississippi was the first. That was the first. Wow. And then, it, and then it went to other places. But I had the opportunity to be there uh, when they flipped it, right? And I remember it. Because they they never played rap music. If they played rap music, it was only the instrumental. Mm-hmm. Went to hey. college, came back. It was in '94, um, because I had pledged. Came back, and they flipped the radio station, and they played um, Snoop Dogg. Uh, not Snoop Dogg. They played Regulators. They played that thing a thousand times. Mm-hmm. It seemed like yeah, it played a, what Regulators, and so we knew it was different. Anyway, so that made me want to get on the stage. It was just the station in Jackson. There was the big thing. It's like jams was here or is here how you want to put it so it was a big thing to be on the station and so that's what i aspired to do i saw my uh, boss uh, my former boss the mentor uh, stan branson and uh i saw he was djing a kappa event at the time i was pole mark that's the president if you don't know pole mark at delta delta chapter that's the chapter at jack state university shout out to dd shout out to eight upsilon too at mississippi state but they we, we had a kappa event a dinner or something so my job as undergrad was to make sure stuff was right, blah, 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 boo, boo. And to service him as the DJ, because he was our DJ. And I knew who he was, because he was Stan Branson. He was the big man in town on the, on the urban station, right? He had a show, so I knew who he was. And I knew what his position was. Um, I was still working at JSU. Um, and uh, I came up to him. I said, hey, man. Oh, I didn't say, hey, man. I said, hey, Mr. Branson, I'm who I am. And... Uh, I want to be on the radio. He kind of just looked me off. He was mm-hmm. doing his music. And, you know, I didn't know any better. I'm just trying to, I'm taking an opportunity. So uh, he was like, all right, I hear you. I said, no, for real. I'm going to work for you one day. And you're going to, you know, you're going to love it. It's going to be great. He was like, yeah, what up? I said, and I told him, I told him the third time. This time I was like, look, man, I'm going to work for you one day. And I'm going to make you remember that you laughed at me when I told you, when I worked for you. And that was before you even got in. What? Yes, I told him that. I told him that. i never forget it. And so, long story short, got with Maurice, Steve Poston, who was the program director at Jams at the time, uh, 99 Jams, at the time, uh, they hired me, man. They hired me for weekends. They liked, uh, I came in that thing, boy, I was, he hired me. He said, man, you came in here so clean, I had to do something with you. <laughs> I came in there with my tie. I didn't know. And he said, man, I ain't nobody. He said, I didn't expect you to come here like that. I just knew it was a job interview. Level stop. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, man, I I just, I, I really wanted you to sound all right on your tape because, boy, you look good. You know, this is after the fact. And so, but I passed, I guess I passed the test um, with my air check. He liked it. He said, I can work with you. You got a lot of energy. It's another aspect. You got a lot of energy. You know, you're not scared to do whatever, whatever. And so, what's your availability? What's my availability? Mm-hmm. Say what's yours. I said exactly. <laughs> it's whatever. You know what I'm saying? So 
Um, long story short, got on the radio, man. I used to do 7 to midnight every Saturday and Sunday. You got to understand, at this time, Jackson State football team was the shit in the swag. Yeah, it was winning ball too. games, man. Yeah. W.C. Gordon was crazy. As coach, big, Sonic yeah. Boom, all that was yeah. popping. Yeah, I was going to the school. I was pole mark of Kappa Alpha Psi. So we was all into everything. But I was on the radio Saturday and Sunday. So I was on the radio game night. This was when the games were at night. They kick off at 730. So I would never make the games. Used to hate it. Because the they used to rent party. They used to rent limos yeah. from the station. Oh, they yeah. would meet up at the station. All right, homie, we'll see you later. Bump, <laughs> bump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll meet at the station. I'd be like, I'd be like, God, I want to go so Too bad. I want to go so bad, man. So, But the after parties was cool. Of course, that was cool. But I always kind of had to trick myself, man, because people was like, you ain't go. You missed this. You was that. I said, yeah, but that's all right. All y'all right now in communications, y'all going to be trying to get a job. Yeah. I already got me a job. Right, go I'm good. And so I took that mantra and, and, and took it and said, well, you know what? It's my show. For five hours, I had these people. From seven to midnight, it's about me. Mm. Me turning up, or talking to people, or cutting up, playing music or whatever. Oh, man. Because yeah. my man is at the game, staying at the game. Right. He ain't stunting me. He, mm. he, he getting it up. <laughs> you know, he checking in like, well, yeah, he getting it up. Steve Bowles and they doing all this, they kicking it. I'm on the radio, so I'm like, I'm finna take this and I'm finna do it. So me doing that, it gave my own, I got an opportunity to separate myself from the mailman. Mm -hmm. And sounded like, cause I started finding my lane. Because the more you do something, the more familiar and the more things you say, well, I can't do that because I don't sound good doing that. Well, I sound better doing this. Right. Let me do this a little yeah. bit more. That's what you I'm feel me? So. Here. That's what I'm saying. You had to. I had to learn all of that stuff, and then of course people were giving me pointers, telling me this, this and that, don't do that, and that, and that. And I'm hearing my folk that I go to school with not realizing that that I'm David D. They don't know that. They they don't know who this dude is. That they sitting in class. Cause I wouldn't be like I'm on the radio. I wouldn't okay. do that for whatever reason because I don't know. I I can't even explain yeah, it. Let them let them say it. I, exactly. Yeah, and they'd be and I'd be they say, "Oh, buddy, we was on the radio with King last night." Yeah, I'm like, "Yeah, okay." okay. And I start hearing this stuff, but at the you same ain't even time, tell them after they nah, at the same no, because I be I be wanting to hear what else they want to say. Hear, hear the real, conversation. you know what I'm saying? Hear the real conversation, and, 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 and all of it was good. Now, someone say he sound he doing too much, blah, 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 which I take yeah. all of that criticism and try to put it into something. That was satisfying because it's about the audience. It's not about, you know, you. It's more about whom you're trying to entertain because yeah. that's who fueling you anyway. Do you think radio makes you timeless? Because like, like in television, you can get old and ugly after 40 years of your show. In radio, your voice is kind of the same. Like, I recall, I mean, I'm, I'm 26, so I grew up knowing what your voice sounded like, but not knowing what you look like. Right. And you sound exactly like you did when I was on the way to school. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. like your voice hasn't changed at all. And like right now, kids that listen to 949 are gonna hear Benny Mac's voice for the first time. They ain't never gonna forget that shit. Right. You know what that's I'm saying? Like, that's real. That's yeah, real. That's the voice they're gonna grow up right. on. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Up right. Like you said, right. Buck Wild, I know exactly but, what Buck Wild But you know what's like. crazy when you, I, I always put it like, when you're in the moment, you're not thinking, I'm in the moment, so I'm not thinking of it like that. But when you say stuff like you just said, it takes me out of the moment I'm and be like, man. and be like, no, no, I'm not, no, I'm not tripping. It's just like you know, when you hear stuff like that, when you're a personality or on the radio, even even the newscasters, when you hear stuff like, say, I say, man, I grew up with watching you. Or say with the passing of Kobe Bryant, you know, I put on Facebook, man, you know, seemed like we was in our twenties, even though I'm older, was a little older than him. I'm, I am a little older than him, but. It's still, I remember when he came out, right? So in the moment, yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing him aging right. until I go back and look at something five years mm. of Kobe Bryant. So, yeah, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. I'm so used to seeing Kobe Bryant without the hair, and when I see him with the hair, I'm like, damn, with the, with the look at him. Hair. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that because we years. take ourselves out of the moment. We take ourselves out of the moment, so it's the same thing. So with newscasters, you see them on a daily basis. They're right. so familiar with them. But they're not as maybe they're getting better now. I want to speak for newscasters. I'm not a newscaster, mm -hmm. but yeah, Art Franklin but, might be a vampire. That nigga did not. <laughs> but some of them, but some of us, but some of us, hey, some of us age. Some of them not. Art, Art ain't no young man. Yeah, he's a good for his age. 
Yeah, he he looked look better than Pam Huff. Uh, damn. Well, see, what I'm saying is some of us, but you got to understand, too. But check this out. You got to understand, too. You, your facial physical features are not going to last as long, in my opinion, as long as your vocal features. Yeah, right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? You can do, now, unless you got some, if you're old, where your voice can't project or it's shaky and you're shaking and you can't, right. I mean, you're going to tell, yeah, you, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But like, you could, a lot of times these guys got to be forced to be, to retire uh -huh. out of this business, because man. Their keep, because their voice, it resonates so yeah. long. And like you said about me and like Sam said about Benny and us, you grow up with that. You so familiar with it. You don't want it really to stop if it don't have to right. stop. What about Lou Holtz? Tom, Tom. Well, Lou Holt sound like Sylvester the Cat. Lou Holt sound like he got something I mean, right here. Right. 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 I, I, I believe they put him on now just for comic relief and just didn't tell him. Well, you know, Lou Holt, even though he sound crazy, he, 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 he say some, 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 uh, some, some, some good, you know, antidotes and analogies and yeah. all that little stuff. He does after, all motivational kind of stuff. After, but after he is funny as it. After you wipe your screen out. But yeah. the cameraman be like, yeah, hey, Lou. He good, but he, he don't wet screen. Hey, I got a question. Come on. As far as it, where he made mention of it, and the reason I asked is that, uh, are y'all, is it a reason you can't keep your original name? And the well, reason I asked that's that, a good question. I was, My I'd be on the road all the time now heading to Montgomery mm -hmm. and I heard your voice. Hold oh, up, that little homie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, I had to listen to it for a while, but you had a different name. Was it Homer or Dave? Was I, I was uh You well, you little homie in Montgomery. Yeah. yeah. But when you got back here you changed. Yeah, well the only reason I did that because I just felt like little homie was not appropriate yeah. for but could you have kept it in the <laughs> corner? Yeah. Oh, okay. Definitely. Little and and I just out. met somebody. Yeah, I mean, little homie, I'm grown. And, you know, yeah, I, mean, I got great. You had the brains. You a little homie, my nigga. I That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think I just be homie. But it's cool because I met somebody. I met two people. Did Winona. Went over to Winona today, man. They opened up a store. So it was over there. And, and some of the folks in there, man, they was like, little homie. I was like, yeah. That's no. me. You know what I'm saying? So, no, to answer your question, uh, you can. It's, it's suggested that you keep your name. It's easier for people to remember and to recognize and associate you with your name. A lot of people may uh, in, uh, incorporate their name. Not incorporate, copyright their name. I'm sorry, excuse me. Copyright their name because their name is important. You know what I'm saying? Like your girl, uh, what's her name, man? What's love got to do with it? Uh, what's her name? No, not, that's the actress. Tina crazy. Turner. Tina Turner. When they was in the court, as far as the movie goes, she well, said she wanted she want to keep her name. Yeah. Right? So, you know, if especially if you're well known by that name, yeah. you know what I mean? So I mean, we uh we don't think think about it all the time about the longevity. Like you said, we we into the moment. Like right. you said. So well, if you started I mean. young and you named yourself, right. of course your name gonna be some relative to right. that time, like right. Lil Bow Wow. Right. But see, also you gotta you understand. Know. Remember, my pops, the way it worked out, he was Lil Britches, and yeah. so I took that. <laughs> That's a funny ass name. Funny and, and memorable, ain't it? You don't That's forget a damn that. Comedians now. Exactly. Now. <laughs> and he had check this out. And he had and he had stuff, man, with Lil Britches on. Yeah. Like he had it in quotes a little bit. It's just funny. But all I just, them I just names, see all kinda, that. Yeah. kind of crazy like that. Yeah. yeah. And so with me, I always, you know, it just happened. It, well, let me tell you how I got my name. First off, I was David D. First, and then I hated that name. I didn't even want that. The only reason I said it was an example. Steve Posen was like, "Hey man, what you gonna call yourself?" I said, "Well, I really, I really used to like my man down in New Orleans, Davey D. That was his name. It was Davey D." You went David. I didn't do anything. Okay. Steve Posey said, okay, what's your name? What's your whole name? I said, my middle name is David. He said, okay, you're going to be David D. I said, oh, uh, no. That don't want, but I didn't want to tell him, no, yeah. that's not what I want to be. Let's I'm trying ahead. to get on the radio. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, let's, let's do it. So when I would say it on the radio, it sounded crazy to me. I wasn't comfortable. It threw it me off. Original. It wasn't original. I felt some type of way about it. And so one day, um, it's a song. It's Snoop Dogg. It's 
Tupac. It's America's Most Wanted. They had, they used to. Gangster Party. Gangster Party. You know, before they was all boom, 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 they used, Jackson, Mississippi is a market you come through. The labels would bring unknown artists to get them known. Jackson, Mississippi, all the smaller markets, they would test artists there. That's really what it was. We call them track dates. But we used to have them, these guys come through, you know, on dates and stuff and whatnot. And so, anyway, met the guys. Well, I never met Tupac. Met, met Snoop way back in the day. And so he said, little homie. And at the time, I had a regal. <laughs> so in the song, it was... Call him lock. It was like... Call him lock on. Nah. <laughs> I should have, that thing got stolen about three times. Well, yeah, no. that's the easiest yeah, car to steal, man. Well, people, what? Like what? I ain't what? Exactly. I had one after the third They'll time he got stolen. What? Too. Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, man, so in the song, he says, get, do it all legal, get scooped up by the little homie in the regal. Yeah. So I took that oh, and said, okay. oh, wait a minute. I'm in the regal every day. Yeah, in the regal. Uh, so yeah, guess what? Baby, baby. I'm oh, the little yeah. homie. That's me. So I came, I'll never forget it. I right. came in relieving the mailman. I used to relieve him on the weekends. He had worked the, the, the afternoon shift and I would relieve him. So uh, he get off at seven. And I said, uh, man, I hate this David D. I would confide in him too. I hate this name Steve got me saying. He said, and wait, mailman, when he was off the when he was on the air, mm -hmm. he was like, this is the mailman, da 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 da. And then um, on 99 Jam, WJMI, da, 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 da. he'd be going in. But when he off the air, he talked like this, man. What's up, man? What's going on? <laughs> how you doing, buddy? That's how he would talk, right? Oh, so, man. so I would be like, mailman, I'd hate this damn name. He's like, man, he'd do this, man. Man, I tell you what, man. What you been thinking about, man? What you? I mean, what about you, man? What you? If you don't like it, I mean, I said, well, I'm in the regal, and you know that song Snoop them got. <laughs> I'm the little homie. The he said, wait a minute, you the little homie in the regal, man? Damn it, you sure live, man. You the little homie in the regal. That's your name. So yeah, boom, yeah. there it is. I said, damn. So I said, I said, uh, I about to say V, but I used to say, uh, it's 99 Jams, WJMI, it's the little homie in the Regal. I actually drove a Regal, so crazy this shit sound. 1986 Regal, it was my mom, hand me down, gave it to me. Uh, blue Regal, 86, drove it around, back and forth, Jackson State University. So that was my stick. Mm -hmm. That was my lane. Yeah. It was the little homie in the Regal. I used to drive up on campus, everybody said, hey, little homie! Yeah. In the regal. So if you go to Jackson, Mississippi mm -hmm. right now, you can't say the little homie. Yeah. You gotta say, the oh, they gonna say, oh, the little homie in the regal. That's how they say oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're the little homie in the so regal. You branded, you branded the shit out of there. Exactly. Right. Right. But I didn't know it at the time. Yeah. You feel yeah. what I'm yeah. saying? I didn't know that. I learned that. Moment. I was yeah. in the moment. You know, you would have merch. All of that. But, <laughs> but, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, but that's how that that's how that name came, and I shortened it. That's yeah, dope. Because when I got to Birmingham, I didn't have a regal anymore. <laughs> you feel me? What'd you have? What kind of car you have? When I came to Birmingham, I had a. Uh, did I have a regal? Lincoln. No, 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 no. I had the. Uh, Lincoln. Uh, I didn't have. A, I didn't have. What did I have? I had something else. It wasn't a regal. It wasn't a regal. It was something else when I came to Birmingham. I can't even remember. But it was. Uh, what, but whatever it was, it wasn't a regal. How about that? Yeah. And so I didn't want to call myself La Homie in the Regal. They ain't have a Regal. La Homie in the Bicep. It was just La Homie. <laughs> that was it. The La Homie. That's all it was. You know what I'm saying? So, so I just cut that off. Then it was La Homie. And then when I, you know, thought I was too old to be a little, it was, it was uh, homie. just Homie. So and then it became over here, it was Homie J. And, I, and, you know, I used my real name, which is Jerome. And I, I, didn't, I wasn't comfortable using it because, hell, I really never really liked my name. <laughs> so I wasn't, you know, but now I'm more comfortable with it, you know. I studied, I studied the, the heritage of it and all that good stuff. And Let me ask you this, before you got comfortable with your name, if you could have changed your name. To what? what? To my real been? name or my radio you name? No, I'm saying, like, if you, like you said, you weren't happy with Jerome. This if you, <laughs> you could have changed your I name. I probably would have changed change my you, name what to, like, like a, probably yeah. like a, no. Rob. <laughs> Probably like a uh, Rob. No. A nigga like Rob or yeah. James. Uh uh. Don't give now one of them 2020. Yeah, it would have yeah, been yeah. one of them. It would have been like something like a. Laquarius or no shit. No. Like a Psychiatrist. No. I don't know, man. It probably would just been something yeah, simple. Mike. Uh, probably. Mike my boy, name, my boy name is Brad. It's short for Bradford. 
But something crazy like that. Something like that. You gotta keep it seventy now. You know some of this shit wasn't out of seventy now. Yeah, yeah. Some of this shit wasn't even out. I, I never want to be no Antoine. <laughs> I, Not, I don't know if I call no Antoine. Antoine. Go see, they call you Antoine. That shit is universal. But see, that That's was a female name, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before he had a lot of folks, up. man, that was a call up. Especially <laughs> when I was in uh, school, man, folks, the teacher would always call me Jeremy. I'm like, no, it's Jerome. But I guess if you break it down, it does look like Jero me. But oh, you, damn. you feel me? Damn. But I never understood that. Damn. I'm like, why is you call? Why are you calling me? Is that what it might have been? Next, I went to a white. I went to. I went to a uh, white. Look, my mom's integrated, bro. That's that was a shout out to Barbara Crompton. Hey, Miss Miss Crompton. Look, she integrated. She had no fear. She okay. had four kids, single moms. Went to uh, night school, nursing school. Got us out the projects. Big shouts out to you, mom. Just thinking about it, kind of making me a little emotional, but just thinking about it because I was in the moment, right? Yeah. In the projects, went to night school, did her thing, man, cooked and all this little stuff, little dude, snotty nose kid, had to be watched and all that. You know what I'm saying? So when she got a better job, man, she moved us out of there. And when she moved us, she moved us first to the uh, whatever side of town that was better for her kid. Yeah. Yeah. So she moved us to Golf View Apartments. I remember that. Then uh, my mom, she she, uh, she got married, stepfather, Slim was his name. Um, married, they moved to Sunkiss, which was a real nice neighborhood in Biloxi. Mm-hmm. It was real, real nice. Then when they divorced, she moved across the bay, which is now psh, casinos. It's crazy how Biloxi's grown, but across the bay at that time, it was no, it was called North Biloxi. It's the Ivanville. It was North Biloxi at the time, but it's the Ivanville now. It's the same thing. We call it across the bay. And uh, moved there. Man, it was all white neighborhood. We, we got the little, you know, the little, the, the signs or we don't want you here. All of that. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. Real talk. We was like the only black family in that neighborhood. My mom would do it like that, though. She type person, look, if it's not good, I'm going to get gone and go where it is good. And I ain't, you know. So all of that stuff was happening. Then um, she she again moved us. Well, moved me by this time. All my, because I'm the youngest. All my siblings was gone to the service. And uh, I'm the only one that didn't go straight to the service. I went straight to college. You know what I'm saying? But. Uh, I was the youngest. My my brother next to me, Daryl, is, is six years older than I. And then uh, my my sister's seven years older. And then my, my brother Reginald's nine. And I got some older siblings on my pop side. But uh, I'm the youngest out of everybody. You know what I'm saying? So, um, shoot, man, moms and movers. Hey, we finna go here. <sighs> so that's another thing, man. I had to learn how to get in into the crowd because I was always a new kid. You feel me? And I think. I was, I'm still an introvert, believe it or not, but I had to exhume another personality to get along with folks I didn't know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I was always a new kid. I was a new kid. I was a new kid, you know, coming to the Ivyville. I was a new kid. Adjusting. Adjusting. I had to, man. I had to because mom would be like, she would, she would, hey, I got a better gig. We moved to a better spot. Let's move. Let's go. And it was... Boom, just like that. You know what I'm saying? I never forget it. She moved one time. I was like, no, don't move. I'm happy I'm here. Straight now, I'm mom, great because I'm straight. I, she was like, we got choices. You you want to move to Atlanta? I never forget this. You want to? It was just me and her. All my other siblings have gone off to serve. You want to move to Atlanta, or you want to move? Just we was in Biloxi, or do you want to move to Jackson, Mississippi? I'm like, what kind of question is that? I want to stay in Biloxi. I'm kicking it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to go nowhere. She said, no, 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 no. And so she, um, she got remarried, oh, excuse me, she got married again um, to my stepfather. And uh, we moved to Jackson. So we moved to Jackson. And uh, moved to Jackson, I was in eighth, eighth, uh, eighth grade, 13 years old, man. So I had to get in where I fit in. At the time, in Jackson, Mississippi, why they was throwing up bloods, How gangster far? disciples, mm-hmm. vice lords. How far are Jackson what? and Beliz apart? They are three and a half hours. Mm-hmm. Top to bottom. Yeah, so it's like it's like coming from Birmingham to Montgomery. I mean, excuse me, to uh, Mobile. It's a little long on the drive, but it's too different. And I would read this stuff. I'm like, I ain't trying to go to the jazz. The boy game late, and they was game late. So I'll never forget when I, one of my first days of school, I sat like this. No, I sat like this. I sat just like this. I ain't know anybody, so I'm sitting in the back, kicking, you know, chilling. They cutting up, laughing. I'm just sitting in the back because I don't know anybody. I was shy. Mm-hmm. When, you know, you go talk to me, I talk back to you, but I'm not finna engage or initiate the conversation at that time. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Raymond hadn't worn on me at that point. 
But anyway, I'm sitting in the back, and buddy, they just looking at me, looking at me. So one dude came up to me, hey man, you in the game, dog? Mm-hmm. I'm like, what you talking about? Said he said, bro, <laughs> you sitting like this, me, you in a game. I said, no. I said, I'm just doing this, but I'm kidding. I'm chilling. Sit down. Just sit. He said, no, 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 no. You got to be wary because that's that looks like you in a game, bro. I'm like, oh, so I, that taught me right there. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you know, I started to ask questions. So I ain't, you know, I didn't want to get in no trouble. And, you know, and, and eventually, whoa. No, I'm <laughs> telling you, I ain't never get. That. I never had. I always knew the dudes that would do the wah, and, and no even happened. the dudes that may receive no it, happened. but it wasn't me. I always stayed out of that way. I was always neutral to everything. You know, like I said, that I guess that was a gift from my pops. Man, I had the personality where I could relate to everybody. Man, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't talk bad about nobody. I wouldn't talk behind your back. You know, I would laugh. You know, cut up like anybody else. You know, I'm just looking back on that stuff, man. I guess that stuff, you know, helped me for today mm-hmm. because we moved and I had to learn new friends. Well, I wouldn't have no friends. I'm not that, you know, I want to kick it and have. So yeah. the same thing happened when we moved to Jackson because, man, I was kicking it. I thought I had it the whole world. I was about to go to ninth grade. Ninth grade was like high school. I was about to be at Biloxi High. Yeah. That was like a dream come true. <laughs> and she was like, no, no, no. We finna move to Jackson, Mississippi, a place you ain't never been before. You don't know anybody. Going to high school. You know what I mean? No, well, I moved. I, we moved in the eighth grade at that time. Eighth, it was eighth. It was seventh, eighth, and ninth, and that was another okay, change. So you I wasn't going to no high school. I was going back to junior high. I'm like, dang. You know what I'm saying? So in the next year, ninth grade was still not at the high school. Middle school. You know what I mean? So it was crazy. I I didn't want to do it. I cried. I did everything. Uh, rebelled. I can, I can stay with my dad. Uh, I can live with grandma. The whole nine. Mom was like, no. 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 I can stay with Auntie Mary. I was anyway. I was trying to stay in Biloxi, man. And it's so I'm so glad that I didn't, though. You know what I'm saying? Because I just believe, man, your path is your path, man. Like, the choices you make, of course, and sometimes the choices that are made for you are supposed to be made for you. Now, your reaction in the path is up to you. But I, I believe your path is already set. It's set by, by the most high already. Now, you may stray, whoop, 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 whoop. And then sometimes your path may not be led by the most high. It may be led by the, 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 the evil one. You know what I'm saying? Just being 100. You have free will to alter that thing, but, you know. Well, you know, I believe, in the, in I believe we've, we've, we've given the free will, but I also believe your path is already you know what I'm saying? Like, That's what I'm I, saying. I, I like we got the free will to not go the path. We go the opposite way. True that. But at the same time, I believe because you go that free that way and have that free will, that's how you are allowed to be led on the wrong path. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I just believe whatever's meant for you is going to be meant for you. Now it might not be the time. Most times it's not going to be the time in which you want it. We talk about it all the time. You can always put in that work. You can put in that grind. You can always put in that work. You can always put in that grind. What you said today, man, that, that, that on that line? The difference between good and great is 15%. 15%. Yeah. So everybody ain't going to do the 15%. Most you know what I'm saying? Most people not going to do the Hell, I yeah. probably ain't doing the 15 I probably could be greater than what I am. But I ain't, you know what I'm saying? But I like family. I could have been a jerk and, and cut family off and went straight, or I could have been a jerk and cut my coworker off and did this. I could have been a stab in the back person right. and did that, but that's not who it's like I the most am. Annoying you know what I mean? So, right. So <laughs> I'm the person that's gonna be like, you know what? Go ahead, you do that. Yeah. You know what? And we do look that. at it like being you know a saying? jerk, but that person that being great look at it like, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. be yeah. great. Exactly. Yeah. But you got What I'm saying is, you gotta make concessions. Mm. That yeah, a lot of us are not going to want to make. Like Ben is an entrepreneur. He makes concessions to be an entrepreneur. He has made concessions to have this. I told Benny the other day, we was down at the barbershop. I said, Benny, I apologize. That's what you're talking about. I said, man, I should we should have been clicked up 10 years ago when you give me them flyers and invite me to your barbershop to do when you did them comedy shows. I tell him, I'm coming. I'll be down there. And I never came. But now I'm like, damn, if I had a came. We share the same, a lot of the same opinions. You know, we differ on a lot of things too. But what I'm saying is we click, we could have been clicked in. We could have been doing some, you know what I'm saying, stuff then. But at the same time, it wasn't time for us to do that then. It was time for him to do whatever the hell he was doing then so he could learn what he was learning at that point to get to this point. Whatever I was doing at that point, 
learning to get to this point. Half already paid. It's already yeah. paid. Yeah. But the yeah. choices I made at the time may have delayed it, or you could look at it. It could just wasn't the right time. Could have one just Man, right me and my there. wife used to be at the same club at the same spot on the same night every Saturday when I used to do club. Uh, what's that club you be on the south? Chaos. Southside. Chaos. Ooh, Lord. Didn't know her. She listened to me as a, as the person on the mic. Didn't know nothing about either each other. Uh, I didn't know anything, but she heard me. But she wasn't studying me like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But boom. Right place, right time. Mm. It wasn't That's what right I always say. It time. wasn't the right time. That's my point. It wasn't the right time. Like you might have passed your future wife, you know what I'm saying, or whomever, or future ex-wife or whatever, yeah. uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven times. Man, not even know it because it's not the right time. But when the timing is right, you right. have the choice. Of jumping on that planet, as Seinfeld says, jumping on that planet, mm -hmm. or she jumping on your planet, yeah. because that timing is the right timing, bro. It's the right time, and that's just what I believe, man. I just think that's what it is. I think you know everything that we're doing now, me being on the radio, you know, my aspirations is on the radio station one day. That's why I jumped ship from iHeartMedia because I saw what they was trying to do when I was in Montgomery three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. They were emphasizing the iHeart Radio app. That's what we had to promote, the iHeart Radio app music festival, blah, blah. Why is you promoting all of this? And I'm here. You're yeah, not doing anything local. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what's going to happen? Oh, I get it. Because I was voice tracking Birmingham, Montgomery, and sometimes uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Voice tracking means you record your voice, you do the show, you do an hour, four-hour show in an hour, depending on your prep. So if you want to make it sound like I'm there, when I'm like I'm there in the moment, mm -hmm. then the more prep you do, the better it'll sound. You know what I'm saying? You want to just rip and read, boom, you can do that too. But the point is, they'll get one person to do multiple markets. So I saw that, and I said, wait a minute, hold on. They gonna make the app the radio. Which means it's cost effective. You don't have to pay a lot of people. The, 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 the duplicate the job. I said, uh, first opportunity to boat off this ship, I'm off of it. And that's what I did yeah. because I saw it. It was three, four years ago now. Mm -hmm. And then I brand. finished laying off these folks, man, because, again, you know, it's a company. They ain't in it to win it. They ain't in it to make money. Yeah. They ain't in it to pay out more money than they make if yeah. they can cut corners. So... You know, I'm just saying, the whole point of it, I just think all that stuff was in time, man. And I worked at, uh, let me let me put this out there, too. When I left uh, 95 Seven Jams, first off, I left. I didn't get fired. So whatever you heard, anything, I left them. They wanted to transfer me to South Carolina. The deal was that I was going to become program director. I said, if I leave, I need to be program director because I'm not going to be program director. And the station I've been at for 12, 10, or however long I was there, I need to be a program director somewhere. I'm not trying to be no, I'm not trying to. Uh, yeah, stay at the same level. Yeah, horizontally move. I'm trying to move vertically. You know, you know what I mean? So the promise was, yeah, okay, we got you. All right. So when I start inquiring about what's going on, it wasn't that way. You know what I'm saying? It was, it, well, I ain't going to say it wasn't that way. It wasn't communicated to me effectively, positively, it was going to be that way. No. I'm like, wait a minute. You know, don't try to do me like that. After being here so long, I took it personal. And that's one thing you can't really take it personal in business. It's business. But I took it personal. You know, I had been there for 12 years. I thought I was invested in the station. I thought I was the man. man all this, these things, man. You've been on the radio. What I told you, people fanfaring. Hey, homie, play this, homie. You the man here, homie. Come do this party over there, homie. Host this there. Oh, man, artists come and see you. Having lunch with this person. You know, we thank you all of that. That's the human nature of all of it, right? I'm just a human being, man. I happen to be on the radio. That's, that's it. It's a good. It's a great job. I love it to death. I love music. I'm blessed to be in a position and go to work. It's something I love something to love. do. So, being young, being in it, being um, what is it? Um, compl getting complacent, being a routine. I took it for granted, and I just think the Most High said, "You know what? That time is over." Things started changing at the station. Management started changing at the station. Ownership started changing at the station, which means different philosophies are starting to come in. Mm -hmm. People want they people to work for them. Oh, yeah. It's just how it is. Yeah. You know? Account for a lot. But us being who we are, we, you know, being human, we take that stuff personal, man. You can't do that. Blah, 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 and all of that. No, it's not that. It's who I want. 
I want my boy in that position. I want my girl in that position. I got one question. I, my question is here, forgive me. I need two moments. I need one moment where you realize you didn't know shit. And I need another moment where you realize you glad you knew a little bit. The moment I didn't know nothing was when I, I already told you, I think that was the, wait, let me think. Like a humbling, like a super humbling. I mean, I get them all the time, bro. And then the moment where you like, man. Oh yeah, that humble pie brings you to earth, bro. Um, yeah. I'm gonna tell you a moment. I'm, I'm gonna show you a moment. I said this with my wife. And it, look, I used to host, man, the 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 homie, little homie in the ring was crazy. I'm telling y'all, man. <laughs> Just thinking back on his life. What up, what? He was crazy. I used to host super lounges at the Essence Festival. If you ever been to the Essence Festival, you know, you know super lounges. Y'all know what super lounges are. Super lounges are, take the Boutwell Auditorium is a super lounge at the, at the Superdome. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you understand? That's how big it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's big, but it's, it's, a, it's the super lounge. They got their own bar. They got the stage. I'm talking about it's huge, Come right? But it's in the Superdome. So at the Essence <clears throat> Festival, you got multiple things going on, of course. And uh, so I used to host the Super Lounge at the Essence Festival, which means the main stage may have, at the time, uh, Frankie Beverly and Mays performing. But at the same time, you got different acts going on in the Super Lounge, like mine. You know, you know. The little tear downs. Anyway, so hosting the Super Lounge, man, I messed around and said the wrong name of an artist. Oh, mm. Because I didn't really, I wasn't, not. what? Familiar with the familiar artist. With, yeah. But I wasn't for the past the moment up. So I kept right. saying it, man. I was like, I kept asking his, his, his people. I knew who the artist was, but I just couldn't get his name right. It was, uh, it was Glenn, it wasn't Glenn Jones. It was Glenn, it, I kept saying Glenn Jones, but it was Glenn somebody else. And I introduced his ass in front of thousands of people <laughs> oh my God. as the wrong, you know that commercial when they say, all right, Cleveland, and they be like, Psst, this is Detroit. Ooh. That was me Ooh. on everything I love. That was a moment See, that it was humbling it. pie again. Yeah. That mo moment taught me, be prepared if yeah. you're gonna get out in front of these folks. Yeah. Know your information. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. the look I got from the artists and the management after them telling me, <laughs> What this dude name was, Damn. was like, right, yeah, I yeah. felt so ashamed but and embarrassed, fuck. you know, and bad, and da 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 It's like, there's no way your career was over. Bro. It wasn't over, to but you, it, it was, like, it was a very, me. it was a very humbling <laughs> moment. Now, a high point is right, yeah. when I had, the, when I, I mean, most of my high points is going to come with artists, man. Like, I've met most of the artists that you see on levels that are, that are on large scales. I, I've interviewed them. Like I told you, Jackson, Mississippi was a hotbed for new artists. And, you know, when them artists are trying to get named, get named when I mean get their name up or recognized, they came to markets like Jackson, Montgomery, Little Rock. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you have anything to do with them inside peanut butter, outside jelly boy back yeah, in the day? Yeah, that was my artist. They were my artists. Those were my boys. It was me who helped them. That was going to say, put them on. I put a lot of artists on uh, as far as playing their music because People would listen to Jackson. I mean, listen to WJMI for new music. We would well, play new music. Well, we're going for what would they name, man? That was called uh, Inside Peanut Butter, Outside was, uh, Jelly Boy. I'm going to have to get back. I can't remember their name. Uh, okay. But they was under Clarence Weatherspoon. Cadillac Don. Cadillac Don. Cadillac Don. Yeah, sure. Cadillac Don and uh, it was a, oh, man. But they was under Clarence Weatherspoon's record label. Clarence Weatherspoon played for the uh, University of Southern Mississippi. He was a basketball player, and he was an NBA player for Philadelphia Sixers. And he had a record label. And they were all homeboys from the same town. And that's how they got their stuff out. And we had a meeting with him and Stan and Steve Poston to get that record played on WJMI. And that thing took off because the, right. the record execs was coming through and heard what it was. And we said, man, this record crazy. And the rest is history. Yeah, yeah, Kelly Don and Jay Money. But you remember Jay Money. Up. We ain't no brain. And they fell out. Brain. I don't know if they ever got back no, together, no, but they no, fell really. out. We ain't no brain. Wait, no brain. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, man. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, who else, man? T.I. David Banner is a friend of mine. I don't like the name drop. That's just not in my character. But because, like, all those Southern artists mm -hmm. yeah. that you can think of, yeah. I've inter had some kind of interaction with them. Now, I'm not going to say we buddy, know. buddy, huh? We got to let the ham know that type of history is. But I'm just saying. I know you might not like to do it. But, I'm just but we got to let them know that shit here, though, Carl. But like uh, uh, David time. Banner's song, Like a Pimp. Me. Well, that shit was hard, though. Uh, uh, what's my man name? He Flip. got, he, he, Lil Flip. Thank you. Lil Flip song. 
That was me. Yeah. We gonna call the flip when they get them some, Game over. I met Lil Flip in Jackson, Mississippi shit. when he was in the leprechaun suit. Y'all remember? Y'all ever Boy, saw that? that was yeah. I had. Let me tell you, that was uh, my man. Uh, he just got out of out of prison. Big Hump. Big Hump was my mm-hmm. man. If Hump is, he might be watching. Big Hump shouts. But Hump uh-huh. brought him. He used to, Hump discovered uh, Flip around Houston. Flip with freestyle, freestyle, freestyle on uh, what you call it? DJ uh, Screw Screw mixtapes. You know that was big in Houston. And see, mm-hmm. people don't realize this either. Just like Atlanta is to, uh, I mean, Mom, excuse me, how Montgomery is to Atlanta or Birmingham is to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. That's how Houston is to Jackson, Mississippi, mm-hmm. because it's a straight shot. It's a pipeline. It's a pipeline. It, it's, it's a pipeline, so it's like boom, boom. So Houston artists will always come to Jackson to get their music broke. Quick history lesson, Rap-A-Lot music was supposed to be, I'm not going to say supposed to be, it was negotiated to be under uh, uh, the record label that's in um, Malico, which is a gospel label. No, Mal- yeah, yeah, it's yeah. called Malico. It's a blues mm-hmm. and gospel Right, record they, label. They it's about a lot, huge. Put out a lot of artists too. A whole lot. They're, the catalog is amazing. But anyway, rap a lot. Uh, Lil J had a meeting with those folks, and they were supposed to be. That's going to be rap a lot's home was Jackson, Mississippi. He got a better deal, went home. The rest is history. But my point is, Houston and Jackson. It's like Jackson is Houston's little brother. All right. So all the artists would come to Jackson, Mississippi. Before they were big artists, is my point, right? The yeah, artists like crazy in, 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 in cottage towns. That's, uh, that's, I, I, yeah. I knew that that's real too. Running away that's another too. thing. They like to break shit. Oh yeah, because college, 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 I mean, because you got young, you, you got yeah. young folk that's vibrant, that's out and about, that's mm-hmm. going to spread because you want to, you want your music to spread. Mm-hmm. So if it's hot, if I if I'm young, oh man, what you listen to? You know how we used to do it. What you yeah. listen to? Man, that's bumping. Yeah. What is it? I remember uh, Mystical, Mississippi State. Same thing. Yeah. Mississippi State when, uh, when Mystical first came out, we was at Mississippi. I'm like, who is that? And it just blossomed. Master P, we talked about that. Master P mm-hmm. used to come to Jackson, Mississippi like crazy, man. Used to do shows. The whole the whole No Limit camp used to come. We used to throw shows with him. I can tell you one. I don't tell you on air. But I'll tell you one story about Master P. We'll tell it off there. And then you had, um, like I said, Lil Flip. You had, uh, uh, was it Rap-A-Lot used to always be there. Lil Boosie grew up in Jackson, Mississippi. He used to come to Jackson, Mississippi when he was like 13, performing in the clubs. Who is this? Oh, that's Lil Boosie. He was really little then. You right. feel what I'm saying? Mm. Coming to the clubs, performing, but we didn't play him on the radio. See, we weren't playing him on the radio then, mm-hmm. but people knew him. He was working his way up through the pipeline. He was pipe working his way up the pipeline. It was the mixtapes at the time. Well, it wasn't mixtapes, they was just regular tapes. Mm. But they was the tapes, that, like UGK, the same thing. Mm. We used to get underground. Underground, all that stuff, but all them guys and groups used to come to it's the craziest thing. I think back on it. They used to come to Jackson, Mississippi, so, and me working at the hottest radio station in Jackson, Mississippi, I got to, 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 to right. meet them all. Yeah. I know you're about to ask me a question. I'm going to be quiet. Yeah, come on. But when I met, uh, real quick story about UGK, man, I interviewed uh, uh, Bun B and Pimp C. Man, it's the funniest thing. Dude was on lean that he slept the whole interview mm. as I was interviewing mm. The entire time, pimp. He said little stuff, but he was like, yeah, fun to be talking. He was like, yeah, homie. Nah, 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 nah. It's just, I, it's just crazy. Three six mafia, you know, they from Memphis. So all these folks, man, you gotta think about it. All this is in a, what a three hour drive that's one another, man. You feel what I'm saying? That's, that's all this. So the thing, Jackson is the central. You got Same Memphis movie. right there. You, you got Birmingham, Atlanta right here. You got Houston over there. You got New Orleans down low. You feel me? You got all these different things coming in, would come in to Jackson, mm-hmm. Mississippi to get played because Jams was playing that music. They was crazy at the time. And so all the record labels, all the record reps, what we call them, would come through and we would say, hey, this is what's hot. This is what we feeling. And like I tell you, if it's popping in Jackson, it's going to pop in Little Rock. It's going to pop in Birmingham. It's going to pop in that all nigger, these Southern Negro vibe. Exactly. <laughs> it's going to pop. So they would test it there. And my mm-hmm. man Stan would, and Steve would do it. And so we had the opportunity. They would, So while we test them, they got to bring the artists. Mm-hmm. got to make some money now. Yeah. We put them on the radio. Let, mm-hmm. let the new boy, let the new hot kid interview them. You know what I'm saying? And my interview skills got better. I would research this person's interview. How they did that. What I should ask? Oh, they asked it like, oh, they can, oh, they can do that. So I'm asking different stuff, you know what I'm saying? So 
Met a lot of artists, man. It's crazy. Met a lot of artists. That'd be something else to see all them cats blow, too. All them blow, but all them cats But you know, I think it was a perfect storm. It was a perfect storm. It's like it's it's some kind of um, excuse me, it's some kind of um it's on Netflix. It's hip hop uh, south uh, or something. Uh, uh, it's something. Nah, we were just watching it all the day. Yeah. That's it. They did a segment on the south, right? Did y'all watch that on the south? Yeah. Everybody the guy that uh it's it's a it's a journalist in there. That I know personally. At the time, he had long dreads. He's a writer. Charlie Braxton. Charlie Braxton. I know Charlie. I told him, I look at Charlie on there. He can cut all his hair. Huh? He from That's what I'm telling you. So, but he was writing for the Source magazine. It's a national magazine. Mm-hmm. He writing from the, from Jackson, Mississippi, for the well, Source so, magazine. Think you. about that. Mm-hmm. So he's telling all these folks in New York about artists artists in the South. He's writing from Jackson, Mississippi. Writing from that perspective is my point. Exactly. And at that time, man, the, the the East Coast hated the South. They was not respect. I can give you that story. Yeah. They was not respecting the South, bro, at all. I they were poo pooing on through. the South. But guess what? The biggest, through. the biggest region of Black folks are where? In the South. Okay, so you know it was gonna take over eventually. This is where that gang come from. That's what I'm saying. That's where they come from. Yeah. That's on the East. So my, what I'm saying is, man, it was crazy because I, I had all of that. Didn't know it. I'm in the moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I had all of that stuff that I was influenced by. People I was be, had the opportunity and the blessings to be associated with. Now, you know, the, the T.I.s. The, any Southern artist, man, I promise you. Nine and a half stars out of ten, I have either met them, hosted a show for them, or interviewed them. Some kind of way. Man, it's crazy, history. and the thing about it, this hell thing is so small, man. It's hell of history to have. It's so small, right bro. Up, bro. It's so small, man. And that's not just me, man. I'm just saying those that work alongside with me and those in other markets, we all have that those stories. I'm not the only one. You got a whole lot of personalities and DJs that broke music that you have never heard of. But if it wasn't for them putting that particular artist on, you yeah, never heard got, of that. When they got to the next step no. after that, that was no. they was on that step at yeah. the time. Yeah, and that's no. that time, and I keep. I, I keep referencing the moment. To the moment. Yeah. I remember when T.I. was, was uh, he was. Uh, Held in the same gray sweater. No, yeah, he yeah, was. Yeah. Uh, he was being uh, at Smith City all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, no, I'm talking about before that. Oh, yeah. You still had the same gray sweater. I'm talking about before. <laughs> I don't know great. probably did. He was, uh, what was his name first? It wasn't Tip. It was, because uh, another artist had it. T.I.P. T.I.P. That was it. So it was T.I.P. So. He, they made the label made him change his name, and I remember that because when he first came to Jackson, I interviewed him. And he was T.I.P. I mean, he was Tip, but T.I.P. And they made him put the the dots because at the time, a, a tribe called Quest, which was on the same Q-tip. label as he was on, was Q-Tip. Mm-hmm. So the label said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, you can't be Tip. We got a Q-Tip. You got to change your name." So that's when he became. He took the P off and became T.I. You tell me? Yeah, that's me. Yeah. I think I seen him explain that on expeditionally one day. Uh, yeah, bro. I'm but telling you. But see, I was in the moment. I was, I wasn't, you know, I was there, so to speak. I was on the yeah. radio when all this stuff was transpiring. I witnessed all of this and seen this, the, the, you know, the evolution of these people, man. Mm-hmm. David Banner. I used to, man, I used to do recordings for Banner at Jackson State University. He was in a group called um, Crooked Crooked Letters. The Gray Skies was their album. They was on Loud Records. They was. Phenomenal, but they came out of a group of individual rappers in Jackson, Mississippi called Stew Pot. Mm. It was called Stew Pot, and each the Stew Pot was just what it was. It was it was Benny Mac and Homie in the group. Whole but bunch of if you was in the group, he may be a solo, but it was all oh, the Stew Pot. And yeah. they used to do shows. You know what I'm saying? The crew. Kamikaze and David Banner mm. was Cricket Letters. You feel me? So I had the opportunity, man, for all of that stuff and not realizing or knowing it. I was in the moment, man. Yeah. You know, I did records for Banner, intro for Kamikaze, the whole nine. Uh, Banner took off. That's why y'all shop stores. Like, everybody yeah. else can realize man, it, you know it, man. Uh, break, uh, what's that? break that shit up. Uh, uh, David Banner. David yeah. Banner. David Banner took off. Crump, you know what I'm saying, took off. Came to, came to Birmingham. Uh, homie, help me out. Crump was huge. Help me out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He had his red van, like an Astro van. He got robbed. He stayed at the damn airport. Uh, what is that, Holiday Park? Inn? I said, dude, Park? why'd you stay there? Yeah. He said, man, I ain't know no bad. I said, fool, you should have asked me. He put it in one of his songs. Yeah. 
You feel me? Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I just had him on the radio the whole nine. My man at the time, Mickey Johnson, was a program director. He didn't want to play none of that stuff, man. He didn't want to play that shit. He wasn't feeling none of that shit. Lil Flip wasn't feeling none of that shit. I said, look, man, this shit here is hot in Jackson, Mississippi. And anything that's hot in Jackson, Mississippi is going to be hot in Birmingham, Alabama. He said, what are you talking about? Because he's from Florida. I said, because it's the same shit. It's the same group of niggas. Yeah. It's coming his way. Oh, yeah. You feel me? Just like way. them storms, they're going to hit Mississippi like first. Yeah. Yeah. But they're yeah. coming to Birmingham. That's how it works. A lot so of I, them related to a lot of Birmingham. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Everybody. That's, that's anybody. That's any reason. So I'm saying, my point is, you can't deny this. You need to get on top of it. Right on. Yeah. And he, fortunately, he listened. Banner would be around. He met. You know, it's relationships. And we blew the record up. Same thing with Flip. At the time, uh, 95 Seven Jams, all the labels looked at 95 Seven Jams as far as artists. So if nine, if this, I don't know if it's still like this, but when we were there, the regime was there. When we played a record, we was like ranked. First off, we was ranked number three, number four in the nation as far as ratings of radio stations across the board. Yeah, that's huge. 95 Seven Jams was nationally ranked rated station. It was huge, right? So as far as hip hop. And R and B, with came to hip hop, on 95 Seven Jam stamped it and played that bitch about 55 city times. Oh, it was in the- we need to find out who that artist is, mm-hmm. cause they wouldn't be playing it unless it was hot like that. And if they are playing it like that, then yeah, we can take that shit to Atlanta. We can take it to Charlotte. We can take it to blah 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 and work its way up. The on con- the coast. The, the, con- the concentration of Negroes here, man. That's so what they, I'm they, saying. They, they so that's what was happening. You know what I mean? There. So that's what, that's what will happen. Yeah. And at the time, in the moment, didn't realize. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Same thing with all the arts. Now, I met Jeezy once, interviewed T.I. multiple times. I'm just trying to think of the folks. I never, I never had an opportunity to meet Baby Girl. Baby Girl is Aaliyah. That's what they used to call mm-hmm. in the industry. Baby Girl. I never had I hated that. I never had the opportunity to meet her. Um, I'm trying to think. I just met a lot of Jamie Fox. Interviewed him and Jackson when he was first going solo. Mm-hmm. He was he had his tour. Uh, what's my man? He, he's on the oh man, what is his name? He used to be on Young and the Restless at the time. He's got the, the show on CBS now. Light skinned brother. What is his name on SWAT? Is it yeah, SWAT? Yeah, I know you're talking about. I can't. Think I gave him his name. name anyway. That was my first interview ever mm. on a national person. It was him. It was Young and the Restless cast. The radio station sits in a uh, in a strip mall, mm-hmm. and on this side of the radio station was a call center. You know, the ladies get fake names because they're trying to get mm-hmm. your money for your bills. Okay, so it was a bunch of females, man. It was females, females, females. So they would either take lunch at a certain time, mm-hmm. or they'd get off and get on at a certain time. Well, I worked Saturday. Worked a Saturday, man, and they told me at the last, hey, man, you got to interview X, Y, and Z. I said, who? I said, are you serious? So it was Malcolm. His name was Malcolm on Young and the Restless. Mm-hmm. Y'all know Young and the Restless. His name was Malcolm. Shamar Moore. That's his name. Shamar Moore. It was the lady that played, um, how used to watch Young and the Restless? It was, what was her name? Anyway, it was a white girl and the maid. I can't remember her name. But it, I interviewed those three. They was there for a community event, some mm-hmm. kind of event that Danny they was doing. And they came to the radio station, and I was the one there that had to interview them. I had never done an interview in my life. Maybe if I did one, it was never to that level of national people that I see on mm-hmm. TV every day or more. And I'm like, oh my God, yeah, are you no serious plan. right now? Right. He was like, man, you got it, you can do it. I, 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 I trust you, I'm gonna be listening, but you know, take mm-hmm. it easy. Just, just, just have a conversation with them. Just ask questions you wanna know. And so that's what I did. But the crazy part, when they heard, them ladies heard that Shamar Moore was mm-hmm. at that radio station, Ooh. nigga. It was pandemonium in that thing. I was a young dude on the radio with all these females coming in there. What? Ooh, I was crazy. But it's just it's 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 weird, man. Because I got to meet these people, and like you said, now I see how their careers have blossomed. Or yeah. some of these dudes you don't even ever hear from. Yeah, right, right. Uh, Akon. I interviewed Akon, first person in Birmingham to interview Akon. He had an artist. Akon was on the hook of another artist's song. I can't remember the artist's name. He was on Locked Up, Style P. No, 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 no. It was before Locked Up. Locked Up was Akon's song. This, oh, yes, it was. Yeah, this it was. artist, Style I'm talking. people featured on it. Yeah, you go. Yeah. Akon was on this artist's song, just on the hook. But he came with the artist because Akon was on the hook. And we sat and we talked. And I was like, damn, man, where you from? He said he was from Africa. I never forget it. He said, I got music coming out. 
He said, I used to be in prison, blah, 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 but I got music coming out. I'm an artist. I said, yeah. We just was talking. This is off the air. This was not on the air. I'm like, okay. Da, 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 da. You know, he, he is dark as his dog on thing right there. Yeah. But if the, the, the thing is, I don't know where that artist is. I can't remember his name. That Akon was featured on. But look how Akon, this dude got a whole country down there. A whole yeah. civilization that he's doing. Senegal. Because of his music. But who would ever thought then that this Man, dude that I'm right talking now. to, shooting the shit with, was gonna do all of this? You don't know, no, you know, you don't know this. So I learned over time. I told Benny about Cash Money. Baby called me when I used to live with my moms uh, in Jackson, Mississippi, while I was on the radio at Jackson State. He called me. I'll never forget it. I was hanging out playing a video game, and I used to hate them damn record labels calling me when it wasn't my record time. I was mix show coordinator. So all the new music, they filtered that shit to me. They didn't want to deal with them. So they let him deal with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I got to deal with all the new music. But I used to be like, man, don't call me on my time. I don't want to hear that. I don't want you trying to get me to play shit. I don't want to listen to nothing. Got complacent and got arrogant in what I was doing, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's another moment that humbled me. Baby called me on the phone. He somehow got my number. It wasn't hard to get my number. He called me, hey, baby, this, this, this baby from Cash Money. I'll never get this. I said, okay, who is, who is baby from Cash Money? I don't know you. Why? And how you get my number like this? But I ain't say it like that. I was like, well, how you get my number, dog? He said, no, nah, man, I got it from X, Y, and Z. I said, oh, okay, what's up with you, bro? I'm playing the game, kind of listening, but playing the game. He said, hey, man, I want you to help us out, man. We got a hot record in New Orleans. Not knowing that when I go to New Orleans, this is the record I'm listening to. But not knowing that I'm listening to it. <coughs> so... It was, uh, at the time, it was Soldier Rags. Soldier Rags. Soldier yeah, Rags. Too. You feel what I'm saying? So it was Soldier Rags. That was Juvenile's really first kind of hit for radio. Yeah. Now, he did some shit for the city, but I'm saying as far as them expanding outwardly, because they had got, I remember when they got signed to Universal, uh, Universal Music, because it was a big ass shit in New Orleans. And I was in New Orleans the weekend, they got signed. They had a huge ass party. It was crazy. It was, it was phenomenal because nobody had got such a deal ever in hip-hop. $30 million. Oh, I remember that. Universal Music Group. Never forget it. it was, uh, Uptown Angela was on the radio station. She was doing a live remote. Uptown Angela is now the damn head itch in New Orleans. She runs the radio station. Mm. She's the boss. But anyway, um, shout out to uh, Uptown Angela. And, and so they had a big party. $30 million signing, you feel me? So I remember Baby calling me. I didn't know who he was. He said, I'm going to send you product. Gave him my ad. I'm just trying to get this nigga off the phone. I'm trying to get back to my game. Hmm. I said, all right, here go my address. Send me the music. He said, I'm going to send you some paraphernalia too. And I'm going to send you some more stuff. Because I was, you know, I was acting like a jerk. You know, I was treating him. I didn't know who he was, you know. So I was just like, I'm trying to get my phone, trying to get back to my video game, blah, 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 enjoy my time, what I'm doing. So anyway, long story short, man, he sent me all of that shit. He sent me BG, all the BG catalog. He sent me all the Hot Boys. Yeah, he sent me, he sent me, exactly, he sent me shit. juvenile stuff. He sent me new stuff they hadn't released. He sent me all this shit. Plus he sent me soldier rags, had cash money on. I wish I still had, I may still have a soldier rag. And I still got all the music that he sent me. And I became a BG fan listening to that shit. Yo, my nigga. That's my favorite yeah. Cash Money artist, BG, Baby Gangster. Yeah, exactly. He was the first, if people don't realize BG that. Was the truth. BG was the first. They called him Baby Gangster because the way he rapped, was, he was talking about gangster shit, right? Yeah. But he was a baby. Then they got Juvenile. And then they got um, uh, a Turk. I mean, yeah, Turk. And Lil Wayne was the youngest. He was just like the son. Like, it's crazy when I'm watching that shit, I remember it. You know what I'm saying? Because I was in that moment. I mean, I wasn't hanging out with these niggas, yeah. but I was the niggas so, they was calling to get their music man, played. Come, you feel me? Happened, yeah. You see, but I treated the dude. I said treated him differently. Yeah. Now I look back on it. Right, the relationship got, would have been better. You feel me? I would have been like out there with some videos or some shit. Yeah, let me get about two, three shows. Exactly, get some shows, but I wasn't looking at it like that, yeah. man. My foresight went that way. Unfortunately, I wish I had it then. But my hindsight makes me humble. My hindsight say, okay, you can't do that no more. Because look what happened. So folks. Because you never know how folks may blow, man. 
that's true. That's how that's how this shit is. Today we in the barbershop doing this interview. Tomorrow, nigga, we could be on a, a sound stage with two hundred people. Tomorrow, that's how this shit go. Yeah. And that, and but the thing is, is it is is it your time for it to go like that? Because it may be t- it may be it's gonna go like that, but you may not be ready for it. I mean, that happens to people ready. too. Yeah. Some people, man, be like, time. shit. They they in that moment, man, and don't boom. Yeah, right. And then that shit be gone. So leave leave some with the young artists. Uh, before we go, I know B gonna wrap it up shortly. Okay, I know I'm talking to man. Uh, I, know, I get paid to talk yeah, out there. Yeah, no I get good. paid to talk. Great I will talk. Great yeah. interview, man. I will talk. Leave something with the young artists that, from your experience, all these all these artists you seen came in the game, and we know what they've done because we've set up and watched it for the last twenty years or so. In the beginning, how you said the younger artists, it got to be hits. Radios get. Make the radio make money off of playing hits, playing songs that people know that people want to hear. Leave some of these young artists that, yeah. from your experience, that you've seen when dealing with those other people who have blown. What you seen in them that made you say, "I'm gonna play your music." What did you hear? What did you see? You know, it could be multiple what was things. The difference? It could be multiple things, That's man. Question. That's a great question. It could be multiple things because each artist is gonna be different. The approach probably is gonna be different. Um. Just like no one person is the same, no artist. True that. You know what I mean? So they may emulate Something other artists. Touch you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is, it could be personality. It might t- struck me. It can be. It could yeah. be the swag. It could be the confidence. The Shit. Music itself. It could be the music yeah. itself. Hell, it might be the look. Yeah. I mean, because it, what it is, you're trying to be sold. Come on now. You're trying to be sold. Sell yourself, basically. I just yeah. said it. You're trying to be yeah, sold. Exactly. Okay. And that's all about the perception of who you are, not the reality. Yeah. So the perception of who you are was 90%. The reality is the 10%. Sell yourself, artist. You understand what I'm saying? So sell you got to sell yourself. So, you know what I'm saying? You got to, if you're going to be a gangster, unfortunately, you're going to have to be a gangster. Right. If you're going to sell yourself. Yeah. If you're going to gonna do some, if you're going to, in my <laughs> opinion, in a way, <laughs> exactly. And, it, and when I've seen and what I have saw or seen throughout my little history in, in radio and music, my little smidget, is if you gonna rap about drugs, you got to be about drugs. You can, or because it's not gonna be authentic. Real drug folk gonna know that you don't know what the hell you talking about. And it ain't gonna relate. Or, or because think about this, man. This shit is small, bro. Is real this shit is bro? small, man. So look, I'm rapping, talking about drugs and what I do, but at the same time, niggas on this side looking at me crazy because he know that dude that's way back there. That may have grown up with me and yeah, tell him that nigga lied. He ain't never did that shit in his life. You feel what I'm saying? So guess what's gonna happen? He gonna be side looking me, and then he gonna tell you. Yeah. Then you gonna tell him. Mm-hmm. And my credibility and my authenticity. No, he gonna catch up. He's gonna catch up with me eventually. Yeah. And that's just how it. So that's what I'm saying, man. And, you know, you gotta play that part. So. Not encouraging selling drugs. Uh, guy no, I ain't none of that. I'm just saying, but hell, if that's, and then if that's who you're, if that's what you see, <laughs> you be of course, that's him. what you're going to write about. But I'm just saying, you know, like Will Smith did it. He did it. The, he was so uh, innovative that he did opposite of what everybody was doing. He rapped from the suburban area. Uh, uh, he rapped, rapped from the suburban side because that's what he grew up with. Oh, you they, feel me? They and guess him, what he is now? He damn movie star. Yeah, they call him Happy Rap. The music was good. He made it. Something you know, because he did something different. Yeah. The, what, his look, the parents, yeah, honest, all that, the colors. Go. You didn't do colors like that in videos then, man. That Fans shit was unheard of. Fans it was just dance stuff. moves and maybe trying to look hard because you rapping hard. No, you ain't got to do that. Parents just don't understand that was shit. now. That shit was 2020 and 1980. Well, what year was that? That 80. was 89, yeah, that 88, shit was like, 87. Because I was a kid. I'm, what, 8, 9, 10 years old looking at that shit like, God damn, you know. But it left a mark Because it wasn't nothing on TV like it. Like you know? that. It was yeah. different. It cut through all that stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I just think with each artist, man, um, or tell the, the young artist, and, and be about your grind. And I'll tell you this, bro. Now... Now it's even better, but I know ultimately the ultimate goal is to be heard on the radio. People be talking bad about radio, radio. They be wanting to be on radio, man. That's the solidifier. That's the 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 the, the, minor the motherfucking stamper of whom you are and what you're trying to do is to get on radio. I mean, hell, uh, 
I get amazed that I'm on radio when I hear myself. It's just it's this amazing thing. It's, it is what it is. Some stuff you grew up listening yeah, to. Yeah, and you own that shit. And just imagine if you're an artist that people are vibing to your song, bro. That's just yeah, a, like it, yeah. it's nothing like that, right? That high is is you can't even explain that. And I'm not even on a level as a as an artist that come through cities on national tours. Mm. But what I'm saying is it's each artist is going to bring their own flavor so each artist should really devise a plan of action of what mm. that flavor is going to be and stay in that. Sure. Pound that shit. Market it. Whatever it is. You know, however that is. Whatever that look like. Use it. If you stumble on something that is catchy with people, utilize it. Because if, if the, the simplest things, man, be the stuff that resonate the most. Because mm -hmm. what... We all have a common denominator. We just gotta find that in each one of, and that's what I try to do. If the common denominator is, I'm a regular dude. I don't take my job seriously. Because I look at it, I can be replaced. Because there's somebody out there sound better than me. Somebody out there funnier than me. It's all of that. But I, I've been blessed to be in the position, so I can't take it for granted. I've done that before, and I got brought down to the earth hard. You feel me? So. You know, when I was chucking tires over there at rim time with Jose, I had to do that for a season until I could do something different. You understand what I'm saying? But it, but it was all the most high humbling me, letting me know, look, dude, you good. You, you phenomenal. But it's me who gave all you this. And it is I who can take all of it away. But he blessed me and graced me and said, you know what? I ain't going to take your life, but I'm going to take your life. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Learn your something. I'm going to learn you a little something. <laughs> so, you know, that's why I always say, man, your steps are, are ordered. I just believe you have the opportunity to free will to, to, to do something different. So to all the artists out there, I'm going everywhere, but all the artists out there, you're independent. Right. Look, man, everybody has to start somewhere. If you see any artist and you think they ass has just popped up and got on that stage, hell no. They have all has been turned down. They all have been talked about and ridiculed and face said no out. to, face stretched out, somebody done did them wrong, talked behind their back. Why you playing the game. All that, man. <laughs> Shorted on their money. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying, man. Oh, yeah. Promoters and boo booed them and all that other stuff. So it happens, man. But look, don't look at it as a loss, man. Look at it as a lesson. Turn yeah. that thing as a lesson to know better and know what to do. Hell, you make a sell that to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? You might can sell those lessons off or, or, or just give lessons out. Like I used to tell my interns all the time. I said, you know what my biggest gift from you would be? If one day I'm out of work and I call on your ass and you say, I got you. Yeah, I got something for you. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm pouring into you, me. So you go out there and be better than me. Because if I need your ass, I can call you for a job. And I have done that. You know what I'm saying? So I... I tell anybody, man, I don't mind training, showing you the works, how to do this shit, man. But, you know, it's got to be in you to do it. It's got to be in you to do the work. It's got to be in you to be patient because shit ain't going to come overnight. It take me, what you say, I've been in 25, 26, 27, 28 years. Long you know what I'm saying? I absorbed a lot of, by osmosis, people around me, man. I had an opportunity and the fortune and the, and the blessings to work with phenomenal people in radio, man. People that that change lives <laughs> like literally mm -hmm. that change lives and been around people who who have changed lives and i had the opportunity to be around these people and to kind of absorb what they do right what they did wrong maybe they rubbed me the wrong way maybe they you know or stroke me or whatever mm -hmm. knowing you know all of that kind of stuff and try to apply that now i'm not 100 percent perfect you know what i'm saying i make mistakes still as wife should take but at the same time, I'm, I'm, I think I'm at a point, you know, man, where I can still learn. I still mm -hmm. want to learn stuff. So I think that would be an independent artist. If you're from whatever city you're in watching this, man, and you're trying to get on, look, man, don't give up. Don't let a whole lot of no's. Because I'll take what they say. I'll take one yes, right? Don't let them mm -hmm. no's dis dis disrupt Ball you, nose, take you off your course. Sometimes you're going to have to make decisions that you may not be good with but it's a decision you don't have to do it but if you decide you know what i'm saying it's been in situations i've heard some horror yeah, stories you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying but you know it's that drive is what you want and i some people are like i don't want that like say for instance i always put it back to when i pledged kappa alpha Psi, five new pop 
Look, I didn't have to take no ass whippings or ass whoopings. I didn't have to. I chose to. You understand me? It's a difference. I didn't have to, but I could have easily. Hey, these motherfuckers be not ass. Come get them, please. Take us over <laughs> now. I could have done that. that. Ain't what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Folks online with me, they could have done that. That's not what we wanted to do. So my point is, with all that um, opposition and turmoil and going through tough times and all that good stuff, man. That's what made You know what I'm saying? That's what made me. That's that's how I, I'm here. And I wouldn't change none of that. And I changed some of them ass whoopings I got when I was online. Mm -hmm. But I knew, you know, what I needed to do not to get the ass whooped. I knew how to maneuver away from it. That taught me that too. That's a good thing, though. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I, it taught me like to, to get the ass whooping. I, I did that, mm -hmm. not to give it. Mm -hmm. See, when I got took over from crib, I got blessed in. <laughs> the nigga that got on each side so you of my shoulder. You paid it. Paper than the motherfucker. That's what I'm saying. You paid it. Paper and that's what they say. That was yeah. what I'm saying, man, the, 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 the fraternity pledge is a lot so like crazy. a new artist. Yeah. You're gonna go through. That's what I'm trying to get to. Yeah. You're gonna go through a whole lot of boo boo. But after you get through all of that, man, you're going to be so much wiser. You know what I mean? You're going to you're gonna be so much knowledge. That's what they have so much the knowledge is going to be had. You, you know what I mean? Boosie Bash? Boosie Bash. Yeah. Oh, man, stop. It. I'm going to get on stage and, and goddamn, man, uh, do the thing. I'm going to do old school, though. I ain't going to do that new stuff they do. I can't do that. Well, that man, you seen the Chris Brown video? He. Y'all seen that video? He doing it now. What? He they doing the it? What? He put the campus in on? He what? Like he I hope they campus, because they doing the whole campus, the whole campus scroll. Don't yeah. I'm like, got it. I'm like, damn, the niggas campus. They should be if they ain't. They, well, they, 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 they going to bless them, man, man. Get that money. Whatever. We're going to bless them. Right? Well, they you know, may. They yeah, 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 them, yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. They, 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 they going to bless them. Membership <laughs> intake is what they call it. That's what we call it. We're going to need a show. Watch it, Will. No haste. You know. Come on through. He's going now. You owe us. You owe us, Chris Brown. You owe us. You owe us. What else? What else y'all want, man? What is this? What? Almost. Almost. Okay. So, so out of all that. No, I got to get up early in the morning. Yeah, shit. Uh -huh. I do too, man. God damn. But uh, yeah, out of, five, out of all the stations you done been to, out of all the things you done been, been through, far as with dealing with the artists, dealing with different uh, executive producers, dealing with directors and all that, right now at V949, how does that differ? And we'll close on that. How does it differ from Wait, let's ask stations? it again. Say it again. With all the things you done been through with what people call major stations, your P1 mm -hmm. stations. Yeah, 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 okay. Your big stations. How does 94.9 differ from that as far as the environment? i answer like this, man. What I believe in radio stations are radio stations are were set up to be community. Yeah. Feel me? So when you set up a radio station, remember I told you they were named after the owner. So if, if, if you... Uh, if you own the radio station, it was W, whatever your name was. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, that being said, man, it's good to be on these big radio stations, man. And I advise, I mean, if you want to be on a big radio station in Atlanta, my, my aspiration was to be on in Atlanta, well, Charlotte and then Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I, I, I was good, you know, it's all the same. Mm -hmm. it's, it's whatever you want to be, whatever you want to do. But with, with V94.9, when Courtney French recruited me to get on, Chris Coleman told me, hey, man, got something you're doing, man. I want you to be a part of it. It was like, oh, really? Got to, got to get back to basics is my point. Mm -hmm. You know, because these stations, man, are owned by these conglomerates, these big companies, man. Again, it's the bottom line. It's, it's, it's stuff that they have to do. It's channels that they have to do because mm -hmm. it's a big machine. They can't just move. They have to move. So to move like a big spaceship or a big, what is that, uh, aircraft carrier, you just can't switch lanes. When they switch lanes, it's yeah, they switch lanes. it's like that, right? Man. Versus being black. That's so what I'm right. saying is, with V949, man, we get to move. We can switch lanes. We can switch lanes. Mm -hmm. We can change up stuff. And it's more it community. It it's more community based. Mm -hmm. We can switch lanes for the community. You know what I mean? We can go to when 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 uh, when uh, Little Cupcake was 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 murdered. Yeah. You know, we can go we can go over there because we can do it. We don't have to go through a channel of people. Hey, Courtney, this is what we think. Mm -hmm. What you think? Brilliant. Do it. Mm -hmm. All right. We over there. Mm -hmm. That's how that's that's how it happened. That's how it happened. 
It wasn't, hey, we got to do this and this. What do you think? No, man, we finna do it, man. It's the community. You know what I'm talking about, B. It's the community. The same thing, um, Chris and I did something else. He broadcast it from Inslee, uh, Inslee Park. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, was it the, the school day? What was it? When they, when they was having all the uh, yeah. school weeks. Yeah. So we broadcast. But I'm just saying, we can do that, man. We can pull up. I ain't sure about what I'm not. I ain't gonna say we can pull up. We can pull up. So sure I'm just saying, we can pull up. We can do what we do in the community, and I think that's what that lured me. I mean, I had a, I had a, I'm glad I left now, but then I, I had a great job. I mean, yeah. it was absolutely wonderful. First off, <laughs> I got there at nine. I'm just telling you, I got there around nine. Yeah, around. I, was promo- I was production director. I got there at nine. You know what I mean? Um, didn't have to be there early, so I would leave clear. I stayed in clear. I leave clear. It only took an hour, the way I drove in the morning. You know what I'm saying? 45 minutes to an hour. So that wasn't nothing. I would time it perfectly for me to be there at 9.30. <laughs> right there at 9.30. Check in. See what I had to do production-wise. Get with the sales folk. And I'd be in my office all day doing me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? No supervision. I, I, I voice track my, oh, I did it live, depending on my mood. It was mm. up to me. Mm. I would voice track my show. Or shows, and I would leave. When my work was done, I would leave. If it was four o'clock, I was out. If it was three o'clock, I was out. Hmm. Headed back to Birmingham. You feel me? Or clear. So I, I had a I had a great gig. I mean, it was great. <laughs> I put my feet up in that something. You know what I'm saying? I was kicking it. But when Courtney French said, "Hey man," I also uh, worked in at iHeart Birmingham. I did those stations. The Beat was on. There. I had uh, another station. I ain't gonna tell you that one. But it's still on. I'm not gonna tell you it. But I was on in the morning too. Um, but I had a cookie cutter job, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It was cool. But when Courtney Fred said, "Hey, man," Chris Coleman said, "Hey, man, come in. We got something. We finna do this." I said, "All right." Courtney and I are, are, are church members. Stand Chris up. and I have worked together. She, like I told you, over 20 years in some kind of capacity. So it was like a no-brainer. Yeah. You know what I mean? What we gonna do? What we gonna do? Huh? We get to do what? You what? It's just huh? Oh, yeah. And then I had been at a station before uh, in Jackson, another hip-hop station that I had the opportunity to build from the ground up. So I had done it before. <clears throat> and that energy is, is nothing like it. Yeah, it's exciting. You know what I'm saying? That energy is like opening something up for the, like a Christmas present for the first time. The toy that you've been wanting all damn year, you got it under the tree and you open it up the box. <sighs> That's that energy creating of creating something. Mm-hmm. And so when the opportunity presented itself again, I'm like, hell yeah, I'm finna get out. I had to persuade wifey because the pay wasn't like it was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, all oh, that's going to get greater yeah. later. Already. You know what I'm saying? But you got to go through the work to get there. Yeah. And so, so shoot, three, two, a year from now, looking back on this, on this moment, looking yeah. back on this, because we are filming this, it's going to be phenomenal. I was just about to say if, if, if the Lord, if the Most High graces me to live that. You, you know what I mean? And your 30 year party is going to be crazy because you just figured out that you've been doing radio 28 years. I remember when it was when I was 25, I just didn't tell nobody. You got some mm-hmm. explaining to do, man. Uh, mm-hmm. That's crazy. I've been in this thing 25 yeah. years. You got, you got some Isn't that crazy? Planning, mm-hmm. 28. Oh, yeah. Thank you. you got that's 20, that's like you've been down here how long? Shit. This year, 18. 18. Does it seem like 18 years? Yes. It seems like 18 uh, years. Yes. Honestly. I've been working on the roof for 19 years. You stupid. Uh, it seems like how long have you been down here? Since the dead open, man. It seems like that? Man, it's it's zoned by pretty yeah, it's, it's zoned by pretty quick, quick but, but come on. I'm just what I'm saying. That's I'm, I'm, I'm saying. saying why it seems like that because we see we see generations of kids yeah. grow. You know okay, what I'm y'all see it. So that kind of put our I, okay, slow our time down. It bring, it you on the radio it make you know it. Yeah. You know yeah. yeah. We see we see the generations yeah. fold, you know. And there, you know, being on and being on the radio, especially if you're in hip hop, you got an opportunity and I always say that if you have the grace of being on it, somebody else could be in your place. Sure. That's what anything. But yeah. if you had a grace to be on it, uh, on the radio, especially in hip hop, because it's so young, it kind of, I guess it keeps you young. Yeah. You got to be young. Yeah, you got to be around young young people. That's why I knew you know when we got to this part. I want to turn my hat around. Yeah, turn shit around. Yeah, but yeah, man, that's me, bro. That's the homie, the homie Jay, the little homie in the Regal, L Heezy, David D, David D. Yeah. What else? What else was I? I was a lot of them names, man. Goddamn, what the other one you said? You said another one. Yeah, he said another one. Did I say another one? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember shit. What? What shit? Where's all I had so many. Home, home in the moon. 
Mm, yeah. <laughs> no, it was Jerome. Oh, it was Jerome. And, oh, Jerome. it was Jerome in the morning okay, to keep you right. going. Oh, That's oh, what it was. Okay. <laughs> yeah, what the jazz, That's what it was. Right. Jazz. The, that was it. That was the jazz. Yeah, because okay. I couldn't have. That's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> is Homer J? Is the J short for jazz? No, <laughs> J short for Jerome. Oh, 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 you stupid. Oh, but yeah, it was. It was. It was good morning. It was. It was good morning. No, I'm messing it up. It was Jerome in the morning to keep you going. On on uh on eighty eight point five WJSU, the number uh, one yeah. source for jazz. Yeah. That's what I used to yeah, say. Man, and that's as far as she let me go with it. Bobby Bobby was like, no 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 no. Don't you come in no, with don't, that? Don't, don't, as far as you go with it. And I used to kill that shit. I came on at ten a.m. in the morning. I, I remember y'all make me remember this shit now. Ten a.m. every morning. She said we're not against rap. That was he said. That was he said. But you will not. You will not do that over here. She said, when you get to 99 jams, you do all of that. You're going to get there, but you ain't there yet. Yeah. She told me that. She told me that. Up in that bitch. Bobby Knight, boy, Bobby Knight was, a, was a nice look. It was a nice look. I just put, I'll leave it at that. Mm. She was a nice look. That's it. I know I hey, killed y'all no, time. No, 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 we're good. Actually, it was great, man. I can't wait to go back and replay it, and I'm sure that the people watching can't either. I hope so. I hope I ain't boy y'all, man. Check out that history, history, man. Check out that history. Oh, no, that's been good, man. So, hey, this has been another episode of Barbershop Story the Podcast, episode 29. Why it takes so damn long for me to get on the podcast? Well, we want to say the best for in the middle. Oh. You know, yeah, hey, we want to say yeah, it. We want to say it. Okay. We want to say it. It took me a long time to get a morning show, so. Because we would have took you from the beginning and think about it. That was 29 weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it like that. That was 29 weeks ago. Okay. But, yeah, with all that being said, man, it was great interviewing. Chill. Um, Homie J right now, as he's known as, B94 Now, Home Team Morning Show. It was great. It was great. It was great. It was great. But now we're going to pay some bills. Uh, February the 4th, Tuesday Night Labs, live at Roots Place. That's this Tuesday. Go ahead and get your tickets. One for 15 Two for 20. Make sure you check that out. And also, February the 9th, check me out at the Come Lab with Ripcord at um, Boss Lounge. Doors open up at 5. Show starts at 6. And make sure you come check that out. Also, uh, if you're in Oakland, check me out there. I'll be there from the 13th to the 17th at the Bay Area Comedy Competition. Y'all check that out. Also, too, uh, the station. Uh, the comedy the station also. Got damn okay. right. Also, yeah. uh, uh, name it also. Yeah, also. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, every now and then I have to put the wood lawn in on. But yeah, also. Uh, yeah, uh, the station got a party too, February the twenty eighth. That's gonna be at Carter's Seafood and Grill. Got some artists perform- performing on that rip cord. With the longest bar in Birmingham. That's right. Keanu J. Serious. Nina Chanel. Uh, who okay. else on that show? Let me no. see. Let me see. Let me see. Hey, oh, I'm Chanel. sorry. I was talking to Mr. Sam. Let me see. Let me see. Nina Chanel. Mm-hmm. You uh, said Ridge. Gianna J. Yeah, Ridge, Archie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. And real poor. We okay. don't want to miss nobody. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to miss nobody. But yeah, that's what it is. Barbershop Stories, episode 29. We'll see you next week with episode 30. Who y'all got next week? We got, um, we got, uh, Tax Assessor. Yeah, we got the man that's running for Tax Assessor. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. So, there ain't nobody that's going to give more. Animation yeah. to me. Yeah, well, yeah, I just said, no, I don't know if he gonna do it. Uh, we get animated, we may not want that nigga out of the house. Boy, I'm super tired on this. <laughs> we may not want that nigga out of the house. I'm just saying, super man. Super tired yeah. of it. Yeah, what I'm saying, it'll be a little right, different. That's right. Y'all had y'all super tired. Uh, At least button well, all the way up. Well, I may put on a suit coat. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna keep on signing the bridge. I'll be watching. Yeah. Yep, so, hey, I'm nothing else said. Hey, we out. That's my homie. No nose, man. That's you right. Info for you. And hey, and great what's episode. Name, what's your name here, Today I'll be. Let's see. Here. Um, let's see. Carry on. So Carry on. T. I'll be David T. <laughs> that's right. Hello. That's right. That's right. And I'm Hello. the meeting narrator, <laughs> the haircut slanger, Ben and Mac. Hey, make sure you catch us Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Home team morning show. Home team. We got you. Home team. And we out. We out. Five. Boom. 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 Who that is? Ben and Mac. <laughs> Two hours. Man, hey, it was a good interview, man. Shit! You gonna edit?